Start button. No cold open again today, as it is time for us to celebrate five years, holy shit, of the Hot Button Podcast. As many years as there are uh, diehards. That's right. (laughs) But what this means is that every November, uh, our anniversary month, uh, we like to take a step back and look at the episodes of your uh, check in to see what needs updating, what needs correcting, maybe a comment here and there. You know the drill. So with that, there is much work to do as the list of topics we've covered uh, only grow longer um, and larger. Uh, Although, thankfully, there shouldn't be anything too, too crazy. Um, Well, except for you a little. Uh, That's for another day. Thanks, Unity. Yeah, we'll get to that. Uh, (laughs) Uh, So that was Austin Blakesley. I'm Randall Beatrice. Just the two of us in this evening. Um, Let's get into it. Thank you, Doke. Yeah. Um, Our debut... uh, 38 Studios and Kingdoms of Amalar Reckoning, the story that just won't die. Um, in an ar- update? Yeah, well, kind of. Okay. Ki- kind of a non-update. Uh, in an article posted by Jordan Midler uh, on January 29th, 2023, via Video Games Chronicle, developer uh, Keiko, Keiko? Uh, the folks behind numerous remasters of THQ properties uh, for over the past decade, including re-reckoning Red Faction Gorilla Remastered and Darksiders 1 and 2 Death Innovative Edition. Boy, they got their uh, their naming conventions down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so uh, they were briefly rumored to be prototyping a sequel. Uh, however, those theories got squashed when leaks suggested it was actually a, quote, original title. So, right. Well, they were the ones that made yeah. the DLC. Oh, really? Re-Reckoning came with okay. a new DLC. That's crazy. For the game. I think that was them. Well, sorry, Wreckheads. Uh, any questions regarding that lore will continue to go unanswered. Next up is hot coffee, to which uh, the brew remains cold. Uh, that was until the most anticipated successor in the industry's entire history, Grand Theft Auto 6, was officially announced to be having its first premiere very soon. I imagine... That has got to be at the, the Keeley yeah, Awards, right? I imagine like, when we cover the Game Awards, we'll probably be talking about it. Mm-hmm. A big get for him. If, <laughs> if true. If it's not at the Game Awards, I imagine that they're going to get out because they don't need to. Uh, just they're ahead of either, it, around it. They they're they're going to get out something. ahead of the Game Awards or right after to just shut down every other announcement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's Rockstar can do game. whatever they want. Yeah. <laughs> any, any announcement that you're possibly making this industry... Will overshadow. Will be overshadowed by Grand Theft I can't think of anything that would... No, me neither. Would, Half-Life 3. That would be it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Portal 3. Anything by Valve. Yeah. Maybe some Nintendo shit. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Um, nothing of note for our contest trilogy, uh, your Abnant Risings and Just Causes. Although curiosity creator and future subject of uh, Austin, uh, Peter Molyneux, uh, supposedly had his latest scam or entertainment product, like uh, Legacy, this under Gala Games, Set to be released on October 26th, 2023. The problem with that is that I can't find any evidence that this happened. This is, I've looked into this somewhat. This yeah. is very common in the NFT game space. <laughs> right. There are so many games that were set to come out in the back half of 2023 that had NFTs in them. And the market they crashed. Just, and just yeah, <laughs> they just didn't. Because the- It's not the market crashing necessarily. It's just that it's a bunch of finance guys financing like, Right, one or two people to make a game that they think that two people I, can I, make. On, on would, I think the the weird thing is that they gave an exact date. That they're like, this is when it's coming, and then that came and went, and then it's just been silent. So after the date is very important for VC funding, I guess <laughs> that's all they want. After initially getting uh, teased six plus years ago, it was revealed on their uh, company blog on September twenty eighth that Legacy would indeed be coming. This following a uh, a lengthy troubled production. Uh, also, it's a business strategy simulation blockchain NFT fueled Web three game. Yeah, uh, great, just in time. Um, but you I bas- told you there's there's an <laughs> NFT game I found that was it was a carbon copy of Call of Duty Zombies made by two guys <laughs> that just graduated from Full Sail, and I'm like, <laughs> do you understand that Call of Duty Zombies, which is one third of Call of Duty, yeah. is made by like a thousand people? <laughs> do you- uh. <laughs> and the entire, like, structure of that yeah. game would be completely ruined. Man. So in this, you basically, uh, you launch and manage an empire, build on land that costs real-world money. Awesome. Uh, this on the open sea marketplace. 
Um, yeah, that's the main NFT market. Voice. Gotcha. All right. Uh, prices for the digital properties range from forty dollars to six thousand. Uh, mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. there's a bunch of other buzzwords and empty platitudes in their press statement that I won't read because uh, the craze is done. That's over. Oh, yeah. Uh, that ship has sailed. That, and, and shit got so volatile in that space that I highly doubt an active community will form around this. The metaverse shit was hilarious when you combine it with the NFTs because they were like, we're selling digital property. And there were like these companies worth more than they ever should have been that were yeah. just real estate companies for digital land. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck face. Do you know how easy it is to make more digital land? You just drag a thing. <laughs> do you see the, the Call of Duty skin that quote unquote sold out recently? Uh huh. It's like a digital. Uh huh. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Also $70, I think. Make a I will dark say, pink, uh, gun. if you're going to get NFT people to play a game, a business simulator is a really good idea because that's all they fucking sure. care about. And the artwork looks like a. Like a mobile, game, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Um, so that's legacy. Mark your calendars. Uh, I bet it'll grace us with its presence any day now and won't immediately get abandoned like a, you know, <laughs> a goddess. Getting abandoned in the NFT space is like the best thing that can happen to you. Yeah, what's the worst thing? You get sued? Yeah, you go to jail for a hundred years. <laughs> like the guy for like fraud? Sam Bankman yeah. freed. <laughs> Because he's bad at league, that's why. Yeah. According to his Wikipedia page, officially, that made me laugh. Uh huh. Um. Anywho, we're uh we're already with the OG Xbox. Uh, Oblivion outside here say of a remake, which probably will likely do that. Um. This trended a bit back in early September, shortly after Starfield released. They've they've remade Skyrim eight hundred times. I don't know why they wouldn't take a crack no, at Oblivion. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. Silicon Knights remains forever gone, but Eternal Darkness director Dennis Dyack claimed in a video interview with um uh kiwi talks um oh i should have checked when this was uploaded it, it was recent um okay. that uh not only is dead house sonata somehow still in development according to him uh it also uh he also proposed that a reissue of my beloved classic could seriously resonate with fans if given the chance today um same goes for legacy of kane uh in regards to the former i'd like to believe that he's right uh it's Wait. T- it's tough to say Legacy of Kane with Silicon Knights? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, not the the original. I for okay, so there's Soul Soul Reaver, Reaver. I believe was Yes, that that wasn't them. That wasn't Legacy them. of Kane. That was, was Crystal them. Dynamics? Yes. And Legacy of Kane I think became its own separate Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a isn't that, isn't that like a persona um Sen Megami Tensei situation? Yes. Yeah. Um but yeah, in in regard like with Eternal Darkness, it, it's uh Horror games in that style are fire hot at the moment. Um, except this is uh, Nintendo's audience we're theorizing on again, here. Again, I yeah. use this as an example over and over and over again. But like, if you're gonna make SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom <laughs> and put work in there, <laughs> figure out the legal shit. Eternal Darkness that's, would do so much better. That's what I was about like, to say. I, I don't know if we'll ever find out. You know, anyway, with with just how trapped it is in that legal. Limbo. I know, but of course, Goldeneye's escape off the N sixty four kind of sort of happened after twenty six fucking years. So anything is possible. I yeah. guess. I like. I mean, obviously, the voice is louder for that game. It's just I, don't know, I won't hold my breath, and that in a port, uh, no matter what level of dedication, runs the risk of it to like potentially lose a piece of its core identity. Like those signature sound effects wouldn't really connect as hard in the HD era of online consoles unless you did some major tuning to update them. I mean, it's Eternal Darkness's entire aesthetic was designed with the GameCube and CRTs in mind. Um, yeah, but so is Metal Gear 1. You just have to, like, not be a true. dildo yeah, and just, true. like, put your mind in the 90s. Yeah. It's not... That's it. I'd buy the goddamn shit out of it. I mean, I, I would, mean, too. Yeah. 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 Maybe Dennis is trying to gauge interest following the collapse of Shadow of the Eternals. I don't know. I, I don't see do the big it, end man. budging on it. Go to Embracer and just be like, yo, easy win. Yeah. Well... Isn't um, Night Dive also tried with Troll Darkness and, they and did, yeah. Nintendo said no? Um, and it's <sighs> fuck Nintendo. I know, <laughs> dude. A Night Dive remake of Eternal Darkness would, would be amazing. Would slap yeah. so hard. <laughs> um, and there's you know there's the whole like M rated thing about it's just I don't know. I think Nintendo's pretty pretty happy making children's toys. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Call of Duty reporting for duty. Uh, this month we saw the map pack turned reboot sequel, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, Roman numeral, not to be confused with Call of Duty 
Modern Warfare 3, non-Roman numeral. Um, and apparently, the campaign completely sucks. Uh, from what mm. neither of us uh, can speak on it uh, ourselves. Um, I don't know. It supposedly they tried something new, and with the war zone, op- you know, open style. As, and, but um, the spirit of our episode, however, uh, the controversial no Russian mission lives on in a uh, fresh new twist on the infamous sequence called Passenger. Um, are you familiar with this? I mean, uh, no, um, but I'm not surprised. Yeah, so the, it, you're on a, um, there's a scene that unfolds, uh, it walks the player through a terrorist attack on a crowded airplane. Um, the original was at an airport. Um, when franchise villain Vladimir Makarov returns to once again trick you into committing a massacre in an effort to stage a false flag operation to warring nations. Um, it begins mid-flight on a commute to Russia with you in the role of an, uh, sorry, an, uh, Urzikstan citizen. Um, you're also a mom who is literally texting her family during the intro. Of it. <laughs> if that is an emotional manipulation. Uh, um, you then have a, um, a short conversation with the gentleman sitting next to you about your kids and soon to be a widower before he shows himself as a knowing precisely who you are, uh, an ex ULF soldier. He draws a gun on you, forcing you to take it. You shoot a few undercover hijackers while getting pushed to the front of the aircraft then uh, Mackie Boy, then he details his plans to strap a suicide bomb vest to your chest and make you look like an extremist freedom fighter. Uh, the facade works as intended as you are paraded back into the passenger cabin. Uh, you attempt to explain the situation, but the people on board predictably refuse to listen. They, uh, they then, without hesitation, rush you, directly invoking the horrific true events that occurred on United Flight 93 during 9-11. Um, Makarov and his men... Uh, escape by parachute, the vest explodes upon the woman getting tackled, killing you and taking the lives of everyone around you. Cut to an in-game new cinematic recounting the phony narrative when the black box is obtained. Uh, it's grim, shocking, and above all, personal. Um, the response to the level was mixed. Uh, sure, it's effective. I mean, how couldn't it be? Um, the most damning thing I have heard uh, tends to lean on the side of whether or not it properly fits into the tone of the rest of the campaign. Um, perhaps if reviewers felt more positively on the narrative as a whole and its inclusion of those, you know, quote unquote, open missions, then uh, maybe this could have resonated better. Mm. I mean, one heavy criticism uh, here the, um, was that the sequence does not feature the ability to skip as no Russian did. And it's right. and similar distressing set pieces in future installments. They all had it. Um, the game is, you know, is of course rated mature, but um, that degree of on-screen violence isn't new to the series. Uh, but hey, I don't know. An accessibility patch is fine for those who want it. Wussies. Uh, I mean, I'm kidding. I mean, more more importantly to those that this hits too close to home for. <laughs> Yeah. The amount of fucked up shit you do in Call of Duty, though. It's crazy. Yes, yeah. They for, always try to spin it where they're like, oh, my God, can you believe you're like, you got tricked into looking like the bad guy? And I'm like, they've done it. Maybe I'm few too many times. in the minority, <laughs> but I think that most of what you do in Call of Duty is kind of you being <laughs> the bad guy. <laughs> they literally did the fucking what highway of death and. That was the, yeah, the we talked about the it on the reboot. show, the reboot. Yeah, mm-hmm. but they've, they've changed the roles around. Uh, of course. <laughs> Which one had the uh the little the little girl in Paris before? Wait, that was the original Modern Warfare. That was the 3. original Modern Warfare. Oh 3, shit! Yeah. That was them directly trying to yep. imp on on no Russian, uh, with the bomb. But uh, America has done so much shit like no Russian. Yeah. in real life. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. We're we're sometimes we the bad guys. We're the baddies, so, as so, they say in. Uh, <laughs> Was that snuff box? Yeah. Remember, no American. Yeah. Um, so moving on to our Counter-Strike global offensive skin betting scandal, uh, popular streaming service Twitch revealed on August 2nd, 2023, that their terms were being updated to ban users that broadcast their gambling for said weapon skins, as well as the promotion or sponsoring of any group that runs such a venture. Um, airing yourself opening in-game cases are allowed, what is explicitly prohibited uh, is advocating for it. A little confusing. Um, it's cool that they are trying to make strides uh, in eliminating that addictive behavior from their platform, although I don't have faith in them adhering to it, especially for content creators that rake in the dough. So 
I mean, if we'll you see. if you do it and it's you get enough people watching you, you just go to kick dot com. Right. They don't. But they're owned by a fucking uh, Bitcoin casino or whatever. So they're, so they're they're first fine with it. The, when they banned like slot machines and shit, all those people just went to kick. You know what YouTube's policies are on that? The, because they would clearly just switch over to there too. Uh, I don't think YouTube cares. Okay, they seem more lenient. That would probably be a case by case <laughs> basis. I don't think YouTube has had to confront that yet. Hmm. Well, one day. But YouTube also has like. Guidelines in place to designate content for adults and for kids. And I think a lot of the worry, at least a lot of the stuff Twitch hides behind in this is like kids could be watching, but YouTube knows when kids are watching versus when adults are, even though you could lie. But like, you know. Nobody lies on the internet. No. Um, But uh, that garbage is a lucrative business, as we discussed. A Wild Lotus AK-47 skin sold earlier this year for fucking $160,000. When... Counter Strike Two was announced before it came out, even though it's just CS:GO rebranded. Yep, <laughs> like a lot. Right, of, I should have wrote that in here too, but that's how little of a. <laughs> a lot of the people I follow, and I don't follow them because of this, but a lot of the people I follow play Valorant, mm-hmm. and they like got back into Counter Strike because of the rebrand, and they were like openly on in YouTube videos, podcasts, on stream, just talking about like cracking open cases and like the amount of money they're dropping because they're millionaires, right? They're Mm -hmm. Twitch streamers and YouTubers. So they're just dropping like 20, 30, 40 K on these cases. And then they're like, I got a knife that's worth this much. It's like when you buy, you know, a a poke, an original Pokemon box and then you crack open a Charizard and you're like, Oh, if this is PSA 10, then it's worth this much. And it's like, you just spent $300,000 on a box (laughs) of Pokemon cards. This doesn't matter. It's all speculative. You dumb shits. I'm sorry. It makes me so angry because they are the same people that will be like, hell yeah, Twitch ban gambling. But then they'll openly talk about cracking open cases and valve will be like, Hey, hey, no money laundering, no gambling, but we're still going to do this for the rest of time. And it's like, well, it's gambling. You're just profiting off of it instead of somebody else. Uh, I mean, it's neat that you can no longer use partnership deals to advertise those codes yes. to susceptible yeah. children and, you know, or viewers and, and children. But um, if this isn't strongly enforced, though, then, I, then it won't, like, ever go away. It'll be enforced if it makes the news, I think. That's kind yeah. of the, the terms of service shit that Twitch does is, like, if we get under fire at all in the court of public opinion for this happening on our platform, then we now have in writing that you can't do this and we can ban that person and then they yeah. can't appeal it. But like, it's a protection, thing. you know, a streamer who has a hundred viewers doing this might still convince one or two kids to like steal money from their parents, but they're not going to get stopped. Like Twitch isn't going to notice or care. Yeah. You know, it'll, it's only when like XQC does it, but XQC also got paid more than any professional athlete ever to go to kick. So <laughs> there's a whole inter- thing's fucked. There's an internet historian joke where they were talking about like Twitch analytics. And this was a few years ago, but it, he basically said something in the lines of like, uh, like what audience is 98% male and has no access to Ill- income outside of their parents' credit cards. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, uh, um, so I believe it's your turn, Austin. Uh, you ready to break my heart with some sad 360 news? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. On August 17th, 2023, Microsoft announced that it is shutting down the Xbox 360 marketplace <sighs> on Xbox 360 consoles starting on July 29th, 2024. So you still got six months right. to buy those Rock Band songs. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. This includes games, trials. This is from their blog. Okay. This includes games, trials, add-ons, avatar items, apps, gamer picks, game trailers, and videos. What's left? It includes everything. It, that's everything. Uh, that's it includes <laughs> purchases like gamer tag changes on Xbox 360. Oh, Xbox Live subscriptions on Xbox 360, in-game purchases, and video content bought via the Microsoft Movies and TV app. Wait, do you lose access to it, or it's just so? Okay. Any purchases already made will still be downloadable and playable on 360. Right. However, they are shutting down the movies and TV app, period, which is a streaming app. So you oh, can no shit. longer watch any movies or TV shows that were purchased on an Xbox 360. I 
did, I did that with some old like Adult Swim cartoons. And you stuff. can still watch them on Xbox One Series S and X, and okay. and on their web. On oh the, yeah, I think they the did. Web uh, app. Like I think like I saw them still in my yeah. library on the on Mac. Windows PC as well. All right. Um, I'm all set. In addition, that digital. Uh, this is not no longer a quote, but digital codes may also not work. Mm. Unless, oh, you, like cash in old, like unless that contents is backwards compatible. I think my uh, my nudie patch for the saboteur. I never, I never. Uh, I'll redeem it. I never. <laughs> you better redeem it. Yeah. Uh, so this is specifically on Xbox 360. Yeah, meaning that games that are backwards compatible will still be purchasable on Xbox One, Xbox Series S and X, and Xbox.com on Windows PCs. Glad I got that copy of the SSX reboot. Yeah. Before, yeah. And this <laughs> only affects purchases, meaning all online services will still be operational. So any game, multiplayer game can still yeah, be like played. They're not Call taking... Call Duty servers are still... You cannot yeah. subscribe to Xbox Live through the 360, but you can <laughs> you still... subscribe to the Xbox One and then or, the, we- or the internet, yeah, and yeah. then you can still use it. That's funny. And then I found an interesting article from Video Games Chronicle... Which they went through every digital title on the Xbox oh, to 360. Oh, which like to see which ones are being lost the, to time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what uh, I'm after right. taking backwards compatibility and previously delisted games mm-hmm. out of the equation. Video Games Chronicle has determined that around 220 digital only titles will essentially disappear. That's not nothing from commerce and will no longer be available to buy. That's what I wanted to know. Hold on. Yeah. There are those who will consider some of these titles less of a loss than others. Various titles on our list are available on other systems or have received quote-unquote better versions on later generations of hardware, Sure, such as Valiant Hearts The Great War, Mm -hmm. Brother A Tale of Two Sons, and Life is Strange, all of which have separate Xbox One versions. It could be argued, however, that game preservation isn't a selective process and that every version of a game is of equal importance to history. Yeah, like the difference between Castle Crashers and Castle Crashers Remastered, they're not I do one to one. Yeah, uh, I think Tales from the Borderlands was also on their list as yes. well. Yeah. A lot of Telltale stuff. Yeah, well, but, they were episodic that, and it was stretched out. But so that's all like, been ported. Yeah, so you can still play it like on Steam or on Xbox One or Xbox Series X, even PlayStation Four. But yeah, they they said two hundred and twenty. They're basically two hundred and twenty titles that you cannot buy physically that will mm. be gone on the three sixty. So you can't pop a disc in, and they're they're not counting like, like Tales from the Borderlands has a physical version. It does, but yeah. it only contains episode one. So the rest of the episodes oh, are right. They did. Mm-hmm. I forgot about that. They mm. also said they use the. Uh, I don't have this written down, but I remember from the article they mm. used the Worms games as a good example of like oh, those yeah. Worms games are technically not lost to time because there is a compilation, a physical compilation of all the Worms yes. games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can't buy them individually. Didn't physically. they do like XBLA classi- uh, classics like Volume exactly, One and Volume yeah. Two? And that's yeah. what yeah. And there there was there was things like there. Explosion Man and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I is there is there anything like that jumps out at you that actually it would be like. Permanently gone. I mean, there's there's some multiplayer XBLA games that are are already um, have faded into oblivion, but because um, they have the uh, if you want to find this article, it is called VideoGamesChronicle.com analysis. More than 220 digital games will disappear when the Xbox 360 tour closes, and at the bottom of the article, they have a list of every game on there. Do you know what the deal is with the indie stuff? If they ported it, it's available. If made a game with zombies it, in it. <laughs> uh, Burnout Crash. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that can uh, that can go away. I'm fine with it. I think Child of Light has a. Uh, That's on the new new yeah. platforms as well. Let me see. Red Faction Battleground. Baz is on new platforms. Bunch of Connect stuff. Fruit Ninja, oh yeah, Fruit Ninja Connect. Um, we got to get those for our <laughs> for our episode. Yep. <laughs> Resident Evil was ported. Resident Evil Zero was ported. Res HD was ported. Mm-hmm. Um, Thankfully, the South Park Let's Go Tower. Oh, those actually play. will go away. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, 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 that and the Scott Tenderman must die. Uh, bu- 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 Totem Ball. Remember that game? No. That was the game you played with the vision camera. That was the game that came with the vision camera. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, the best version of Uno. Oh, the Watchmen game. 
Oh, yeah. That is that the end of the movie? Yeah. I remember. <laughs> yep. That was not good. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and we should point out that some some are already gone, like Tony Hawk HD. And yeah. That was it. Like they that. said they didn't count ones that were already delisted. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's. I would say of all the titles that I recognize on this list, most of them have been ported. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that the ones I don't recognize are worthless, you know. Look, there's probably people backing this up as we speak, so. Oh, yeah. So that's good. Well. I would say that the completionist would do a video like he did for the Wii U, but he's uh, got his hands full right now. So, um, maybe that'll be a future episode. Yep. Uh, shifting from one amazing console to another, the Ouya. <laughs> There's not news on the Ouya. No. So I just have a, a funny tidbit for this that I wanted to share. Um, have you ever heard of Fuse Project? Uh, no. Okay. So, um. I happened to stumble on them earlier this year while sleuthing around on the internet late as night, uh, late at night as you do. Mm-hmm. Um, so they are an industrial design and branding firm founded in 1999 by entrepreneur Yves Bahar and um, and based in New York City and San Fran. Uh, they specialize in fashion, beauty, products, furniture, and tech. You can probably picture their vibe. Um, Sound like Silicon Valley nightmares. Yeah. <laughs> so I forgot to bring them up in the actual episode, but they rose to um, popularity in 2012 for their design of the Ouya shell. Not a bad job on the you know appearance. Yeah. Honestly, it trumps the PS5 in, in that category. Um, though miserable failures continued to follow them going forward. When in 2017, their name would achieve infamy after they were discovered to be the lead designers on the Juicero. <laughs> The most useless, shittiest appliance ever conceived by humans. <laughs> um, if you're unfamiliar, it's a DRM-riddled smart juicer that needs Wi-Fi and a paid subscription to operate. Uh, it's and the worst. It doesn't juice anything. No, <laughs> you have to buy special. <laughs> you have to buy specialized packets of fu- pur- puree yeah. that are already pureed, and that then you can it easily squeezes. drink by itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the the yeah it's it's functionality was cumbersome and limited it was pricey as hell, um like you said Silicon Valley yeah, you had to buy crab. like thirty dollar bags of juice, <laughs> which was just fruit juice without the sugar added yeah which is such a hippy dippy bullshit like <laughs> I don't want to drink apple juice with no sugar in it come on <laughs> sharper image can't hold a candle to that yeah. monstrosity. Uh, the the head group responsible went bankrupt uh, within months of it hitting shelves. Mm-hmm. Uh, 120 million in startup capital funded by moronic investors uh, was torched. you can just say investors. Yeah, they're true. called venture capital <laughs> right. firms. They're all morons. Uh, in turn, Fuse Project's reputation was irreparably damaged uh, following the Ouya and now this. Um, you know, what? they've it, trucked along. <laughs> it makes me think of that joke in Parks and Rec. Yeah. When Ron Swanson makes the really good chair, and then that like hippie lady puts oh, yeah. it in her magazine, <laughs> yeah. and she's like. Uh, <laughs> she, she's like, you know how people drink goat's milk? Well, this is cow's milk. And he's like, that's just fucking milk. <laughs> uh, they, so they've recently collaborated with uh, uh, Intuition Robots, LEQ, in April of 2022 to help construct a machine. The fuck does LEQ mean? <laughs> to, I look this to up. help construct a machine sidekick to assist the elderly with their mental and social needs. Um, L-E-Q. Sounds benevolent, at least so far. Yeah. Probably going to, like, murder them and steal their <laughs> fucking government money. <laughs> so I'm going to be straight with the next one. Um, I'm getting a bit tired of reporting on every single additional change to No Man's Sky. Um, it's awesome that the support never ceased. Uh, I assume those still in that ecosystem are happy. Uh, we n- only know... When the when gamers are mad, so uh, <laughs> um, they seem content. Yeah, um, there uh, there was a PSVR two patch this last February on the twenty second, and a Mac version that released on June first. Uh, they also got nominated for another game award uh, for their dedication to the community. So cheers to those guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was a joke recently. I heard someone on a podcast say, "Just like, just give them that." In perpetuity for that. it's probably yeah, the best community. A lifetime community. achievement yeah. award. Right. For yeah. best oh well, maybe not best rebound. That might probably be Final Fantasy fourteen. Oh, but. we'll also get to them later, but uh <laughs> the uh Destiny Two is nominated in that category and our friend Josh made the joke of like they laid off half of those people. <laughs> 
you were up for award for best community. I think I said this last uh, year when we did game award stuff, but like, don't give them a community award. Their community hates fucking them. hates yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is the a very strange. Yeah, but like, but I love Bungie, but man, the Des- Destiny people cannot stand that company. They yeah, play well, their game every day. Yeah, but they hate it's it. Not about that. Yeah, <laughs> like WoW players. Oh yeah, they're battered. They'll never bruised. Be uh, <laughs> Just returning to the. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we can skirt past Columbine RPG. Um, who cares what Philip Mewson is up to? Unless he got something, Austin. I don't know. No? Right. He might be dead. Well, the only <laughs> thing I found. No, no, no. I found two things yeah. real quick. All right. I found a Reddit AMA thread, which turned out to not be him. Ah. Oh. Some dude tricked, uh, like some Reddit into <laughs> saying, oh, like okay. they said they were Philip Mewson and the people didn't do a background check. And then he just answered questions. And it was just, it was hilarious. <laughs> this dude turned out to be Australian because I looked through his Reddit history and he's okay. like, what's going on in Perth? And I was like, what? Um, but. It was just like people shitting on him and asking him all these questions about why he did what he did. And he's just replying, stop being mean to me. <laughs> and then That's the other man. the other thing is um, he was on Colin Moriarty's oh, podcast. Fuck, fuck them. Uh, At that, that was the last like public appearance he did. His YouTube channel hasn't where, had a video in two years. Where else are you going to go? Yeah. The, <laughs> some other washed up content creator yeah. <laughs> who fucked up. Um. The formation of the ESRB and Brown versus the uh, uh, Entertainment Merchants Association are good. Um, ah, all right. Let's let's recap uh, a brief summary on where Giant Bomb is at these days. Um, when we last left it, Jeff Gerspin was out there doing his uh, boring ass solo cast. <laughs> Nothing to do with that. He is promising for more to come, but he stated that you know before. Um, plus, it has to be difficult to focus on your growing your brand with another hit on the way. Um, elsewhere, Next Lander is carrying on its thing. Uh, which is cool. Um, I need like a, I mentioned this to you, I need like a blend of their professionalism and current Giant Bomb's like immaturity rather than, Mm -hmm. you know, each too far in the one direction. Yeah. Uh, You got to be able to play off that excitement and the cynicism together. Or if you're Jeff to play off of anyone, period. But uh, so yeah, uh, our once cherished website has unfortunately gone through its share of obstacles as of late. Um, We spoke about how in October of 2022, the company was sold by Red Ventures to Fandom Inc., uh, in a bundle purchase with other sites, um, reactions uh, varied. Uh, however, we were assured stability for them. This was not the case, as a couple months later, on January 19th, 2023, video producer Jess O'Brien and senior staff member Jason uh, Stryker were both laid off. Uh, this to little warning, along with several employees of sister uh, fandom outlets. Um, in an unrelated departure... On October 14th, uh, 2023, longtime marketing manager Matthew Rory announced his exit, uh, the final crew member of the old guard. Um, I do have lots of opinions on their current state and what Giant Bomb even means as an entity in the industry currently, uh, but we don't need to get, you know, we into that. Um, I'm glad they're still alive and that their backlog is protected. Uh, they filled those holes with a handful of recurring guests as well. Um, love me some Mike Minotti. Anybody who uh, loves Resident Evil in the GameCube, well... Hating cozy farming sims is a-okay in my book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to their yearly deliberation soon. It's fucking bananas that they're going to do a live. Yeah. Uh, like, <laughs> they sold tickets. It was a ticket event. I don't know. Um, our history of Halo. Not sure if you wish to comment on the ongoing status of Infinite. Um, Still a great game. Their most recent patch by was promise. great. Yeah? A um, lot of people are... Why is the community so saying are they back? They're, they're they're back. It's up and down. It's up and down. Yeah. Uh, a, lot a lot of the diehards were were up, up, applauding the latest update. They it, they did a lot of work. Okay, that's good. It. That's one of those games that like I don't play often, but if anybody asks, I always say mm-hmm. yes. Um, then it was our live special. Uh, that was fun. Uh, I do feel like special editions have gotten less ridiculous as the years go on. Most of that stuff has been relocated to digital rewards. Um, I was going to say Limited got, Run is still out there to uh, provide They've gotten you know, less ridiculous tangible goods, and though. more ridiculous. Mm. Because like, yeah, the zombie, the dead zombie bikini torso was <laughs> stupid. But like we we traded that for skins, art books and three day early access. Yeah, I'd for, almost argue that that's worse. For like $120, which is... They, I saw the the special edition of the latest WoW expansion. People were complaining about that because they did three day early access for that, 
which is different than 3D early access for something like Forza because WoW is all about like experiencing the content on your own and playing with guilds and stuff. And so if one person yeah. in the guild gets it, then everybody has to get it. And it's $90 as opposed to 50 just for three days of early access. Yeah. Uh, Sean did send us a picture of a Dark Souls coffin. Um, oh, yeah, the, the, yeah. Which, that, so that was funny. Uh, th- that could be custom. Uh, um, Westworld v. Fallout Shelter. Uh, the only note I have here is with uh, Warner Brothers, whether or not they want to stay in video games or not. Oh, it, they also did that again. That, was it, did they? I believe they released a um, an Elder Scrolls version of Fallout Shelter. Where it's like the exact same game, but it's, it's Elder Scrolls. Yeah, let me look it okay. up. Okay. Um, so yeah, the the what what does their parent company want to do? I mean, it, it's impossible to deduce that. Um, except then Andrew posted to us about how they are diving headfirst into the live service space. So oh yeah, whatever. Right as Sony's getting out, smart. Uh, uh, Elder Scrolls Castles. The fuck? It's just Fallout Shelter, but really? Elder Scrolls themed. Yeah. When did that release? V- this year. Very sleep. They did not that announce it or put out any history. trailers. Yeah, yeah. Like, even even Fallout Shelter had like an was in um was in the Bethesda yeah or whatever director whatever yeah. yeah. Um, Requiem for Dreamcast. Still proud of that title. Uh, uh-huh. so, so, well, so Sega seems content with keeping away from console manufacturings, uh, but that won't stop them from doubling down on the quote unquote super game that's going to sweep the world by storm. Yeah, I can't wait to play a three hundred million dollar version of Choo Choo Rocket. <laughs> yeah, you just wait. Space Channel Six is gonna be lit. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck they're doing. Crazy Taxi Cra- Four. Cra- yeah, because the, and they said like the, you know it, it's like it's gonna tie to things like Crazy Taxi or Jet Set Radio, and it's like those games were rad, but they were not the, mm-hmm. s- the scale like the scope of them was arcadey. I don't. Know. They were quite literally arcade games. Yes. Yeah. Um. It's safe to assume that um, Nintendo still hates Let's Players. Um, maybe less than Melee fans, though. We'll save that for another time. Yes, that yeah. episode on that will be coming, but uh, there that is not the most egregious thing Nintendo has done to its content creators. Nope. I do have an update on that, Yeah. Uh, actually. Um, there is a content creator who I like a lot named Point Crow. Okay. He is a uh, Zelda speedrunner. He created a mod of Breath of the Wild with the help of some programmers, obviously, where you could play it multiplayer. So you could play like uh, people oh, within I saw that the, trending. I didn't know what like people who was within it. the same world. And the point of it was that you could obviously you could just fuck around in the open world of Breath of the Wild with your friends. But the point yeah. of it was two speedrunners exist in the same world and have to speed run the game to That's a great idea. That like, sounds very interesting. They would do like watch. races. It'll be like get to this point in the yeah, world yeah. first. And you have and, to find your own way. Yeah. There, yeah. And he made a lot of videos out of it and oh, he and sent it out to a lot of other speedrunners. And game. then uh right before Tears of the Kingdom came out, they cease and desisted the mod and then also copyright striked every video on his channel. Jesus Christ. And he had to take down all of his Zelda videos, which <laughs> as you can imagine, as a Zelda speedrunner. Bit of a hit. Yeah, on your fucking... Luckily, he he started out as a Zelda speedrunner. He has become more of a variety streamer, so he has, like, events that he's done and played other games, so he still has still a career. Still talking about going after the little guy. Like, But that was not why? that was not good. People were not happy with that. Man. And he put out a video where he's basically like, I've done nothing but promote your products. I don't know why you're doing Yeah, if yeah. anything, all it's going to do is con- convince more people to buy your game. Yeah. Housing in FF14, uh, Skyrim Mods, Destiny. Uh, so I'm going to serve this ball um, back to you as it appears that things are quite rocky within the walls of developer Bungie as of this moment. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so point number one. The latest Destiny expansion, Lightfall, was released on February 28th, 2023, to mixed reception. Mm. General consensus, and this is confirmed by the couple of friends we have that still play Destiny. A general consensus is that the gameplay additions were fun, but the story was bad. Mm-hmm. And it was a huge disappointment after 2022's The Witch Queen, which yeah, many, many including well. myself, see as the best story content Destiny has ever made. Wow. Yeah, and... Uh, Rightfully so, it, it underperformed. People had pretty high expectations after the Witch Queen. They weren't expecting something better, but they weren't expecting something that much worse. And then 
On May 4th, 2023, Bungie announced a reboot of Marathon. It's old school <laughs> Doom-like shooter from 1994. This time, however, uh, the game would take play, take the form of an extraction shooter. Right. Which is the worst thing I've ever heard. <laughs> uh, if I... I was so excited was when the, they were like, Marathon's coming back. What was the plan like, there? The only yeah. people that would be jazzed by that kind of reveal are people who like Marathon, and they're like, but it ain't that. It's just called that. Yeah, if they did a Marathon reboot that was like the Doom reboot, yeah. holy shit, that'd be <laughs> awesome. But no, I think that's what we all yeah. co- collectively thought it was. And then, and then that news broke out. While this has been in the air, in the plans for a while... They officially revealed the last Destiny expansion in the Light Saga. There's going to be more, but this is finishing off the story that Destiny 2 started in 2024. Avengers Phase like 3. Yeah, this is the end game of Destiny. It's right. called The Final Shape, uh, and it was officially revealed with a trailer on August 22nd, 2023, and given a release date of February 27th, 2024, which would be like exactly one year after Lightfall. Unfortunately... On October 30th, 2023, Bungie announced layoffs. Oh, right before the end of the month. I'm noticing yeah. a trend with that. That's going <laughs> to... Happy Halloween, fuckers. <laughs> yes. Your job's gone. Uh, so spooky. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, scary. No health care. Uh, <laughs> around 100 employees. And reports vary on the exact reason as to why. I think it's a combination of all of it, but... Obviously, uh, the layoffs were related to Bungie's quarters, earnings, their revenue targets, underperforming by about 45% due to the disappointment that was Lightfall. But in addition, Sony has announced uh, or has mandated all of its PlayStation division subsidiaries, which includes Bungie. Uh, yeah, because they claim that like this, this decision to, came internally, and it's yeah, like... Mm. To cut costs. It certainly... They bought them for billions. Like, it they, certainly wasn't. There was, a, there was a tweet that got a lot of... Um, the One of the directors of Destiny tweeted and was like, we are so saddened to lose all these employees. Like, they have made major contributions to this game. It wouldn't be the same Destiny without them. We're sad to see them go, and everybody's like, fuck you, dude. And it's like... It's not his decision. Like, he's a yeah. director of the game. Mm-hmm. It's either people who are pushing the money around it at Bungie or their shareholders or, well, more so their shareholders are Sony. So it's probably Sony because uh, they're yeah. not the only Sony studio that got hit with layoffs. No. I think Naughty Dog got hit with layoffs yeah. as well. And Jim Ryan was like, peace. Yep. He was like, fuck this shit, I'm out. <laughs> I did such a good job. I'm going out on top. <laughs> yeah. um, no one's going to associate me with this bullshit. Here's the important thing. I have two more points. Fuse was very... Yeah, he's a this. big Destiny fan. <laughs> uh, as of this recording, now it has been reported by Bloomberg, the, the, the final shape would be delayed to around June 2024. Yeah, this is what I was... A little, and that marathon, while not being given a date at all, was scheduled for 2024 and is now pushed back to 2025. The, the reveal trailer didn't give a date, but they were going to. I think they might have even had a trailer at the Game Awards saying next year, huh. but that's probably gone now. Um, Hold on. shut this shit down. Yeah, <laughs> they're saying that is internally pushed back to 2025. However, so as unclear. of this recording. November 20th <laughs> at 5 p.m. And I have to say this because it can happen any minute yeah, now. Yeah, we could shut, like, the second we, we stop recording. Um, and then... <laughs> Bungie has not delayed the final shape. They came out with a blog about a week ago. People on the Reddit were freaking out because they said that it's still on track for February. And then there was an asterisk and it's a date subject to change. But That could be on any game. Yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, that's their... That could be there because they're completely fucked internally, or it yeah, could be yeah. there because that's just what they do for everything. That shit ain't that's on a given fire. a date. Yeah. And also, this leads to a larger conversation, which we won't have because we could be here forever, about it's the amount of layoffs that this have year. happened this year. Yeah. Uh, this has probably been the worst year for games on the inside. I will say, not, I have... Not on the consumer side. I have they're a happy. bullet on my thing that just says rant about Being capitalism, <laughs> so I'm going to do that now. Um... <laughs> All of these companies are, everything's made up. Money isn't real. Yeah. 
Uh, the government has decided to curb inflation to raise interest rates, which means that money is no longer quote unquote free. And I can tell you that it is very sad what is happening in the video games industry that is not contained to the video game industry. A bunch of assholes are getting rich and cutting the little man and fucking over people because they're no longer just able to borrow money for free, consequence free from a bank. So now all of the sudden people have decided that something like Destiny, which is a very complicated product, can just be made by a hundred less people, which it can't. No. And those people are going to suffer. And then the people who got cut are going to suffer because now they have to find another job in a clearly in an industry that is hemorrhaging people all around, not just at Bungie. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Can this, I copy and paste that uh, that whole thing for my, my THQ update on Embracer? But yes. Just change the words Bungie yes. to... <laughs> this will apply to multiple stories that we're about to cover. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, like, it just go... Everybody that has, like... If your net worth is over seven figures, go fuck yourself. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Eat a, eat a dick and don't talk to me. <laughs> uh, so now we uh, we got the uh, the 2011 PSN hack. Which uh, oh no wait you 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 did say you had uh, something for that today I do. As of today. What happened there? Uh, this is a fun one. Okay. Uh, nothing related to PlayStation at all. Is it, um, is it related to Hots? Yes. Oh, all right. I think I know what it is. Then. Yeah. In November of 2022, George Hots George of PSN <laughs> hack fame uh, was hired by Elon Musk. <laughs> at his new Twitter <laughs> to fix some of the issues and, oh, relevant, replace a bunch of laid-off staff. Mm -hmm. He was hired for a 12-week, big air quotes, internship, but he left after only four weeks. And he was quoted as saying, between reheated Uber Eats food, a questionable commitment to free speech, existing office po politics, and a push for features, I was like, there's nothing substantial I can do here. Yeah. But then he went on to praise Elon's management, saying he was going to turn uh, the company around, so maybe he's an idiot. Who knows? Fuck. Yeah. How could but you have anything good to say about that knob gobbler? You have money. <laughs> should we we should we specify who George Hotz is, like, what he's kind of most known for? He is most known for two things. Hacking yeah. the PSN, which we'll listen to our episode on that, yep. and also jailbreaking the iPhone. Yes. And he is a... Legacy uh, is... Yeah. That's... Very famous programmer. Uh, but he even said, was like, I'm out, screw this. Yeah, he saw Twitter's code and was like, eh, gross. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, nice. Um, well, then, uh, we have a dressing to do for our episode on the Super Mario Brothers 1993 motion picture. Uh, for starters, in celebration of the live action film's 30th anniversary, it was announced that not only would the cult flick make a return to Japanese theaters in glorious 4K, but the restoration is then set to release on Blu-ray across the globe for the first time this upcoming January. Uh, this from Umbrella Entertainment. Um, no relation to Resident Evil. Uh, who I suppose sagged in the rights since the original distributor is long dead. Um, and will contain a plethora of never-before-seen special features, deleted scenes, and other doodads. I'm excited. Um, no clue where IP holder Nintendo fell into that equation. Uh, they've, they've stayed... Uh, Kind of mostly quiet. Um, wow, oh. that's so weird. Nintendo not talking about stuff. <laughs> However, we do know where their attention has been as the animated Super Mario Brothers movie finally saw its debut this past April. Bet we were there. Um, it was fine. It was good. Yeah, Some be might say the second best Mario movie yeah. ever made. <laughs> Beautiful visuals. Definitely the best looking uh, work the Minion Studio has done. Um, what was uh, more surprising, or maybe most surprisingly for me, was that Chris Pratt's performance was better than what everybody was expecting. No, Seth Rogen deserves all the hate. Yeah. <laughs> he was Donkey Kong and he didn't do fucking Chuck anything. Shit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I do wish the, the script was more fun. It's uh, The it best the best character in the movie was the daughter of the director. Played, yes. Oh, my God. The, the played the Luma. The suicidal <laughs> Luma. That was the best character in a movie this year. Uh, it plays a very safe, unlike the 93 version, and uh, strangely prioritizes the action set pieces over the comedy. Um, Jack Black was great. Mm -hmm. um, the out-of-place license songs were distractingly obvious. 
uh, and which uh, kind of was an adi- a late addition. Yeah, so you can if you, see like if original. You, if you get the soundtrack, it has the songs that were supposed to be in those parts. That and, is a weird choice when you consider how impactful. And the, pe- people have like taken are, parts yeah. of the movies and layered those songs over, yes. and it fits so much better. Uh, yeah, I saw yeah. the go kart, like the take. Whoever that composed, like, poor composer is like. Mm-hmm. You did a good job. Like those, yeah. those songs are great. I enjoyed the Easter eggs, uh, and haven't given it much thought since. Should watch yeah, it again. Fine. I, don't know. I watched it multiple times. My niece loves it. Oh right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it did get a nom at the Game Awards uh, alongside Castlevania Nocturne, uh, Gran Turismo colon based on a true story. We gotta watch that. <laughs> the Last of Us, which will clearly win, mm-hmm. and the stupid Twisted Metal show for some reason, probably to fill a slot. More on my feelings with that category later. Um, but yeah, Mario, I probably would have fawned over it as a youngin. Uh, the fans were satisfied. That's, that's what I. That's what I said when we saw it. I was like, if I was a kid, I'd fucking oh, love too. this movie. Yeah, but. my dad would have had to take me back to see it like twelve times. Bigger, larger audiences, thoroughly whelmed, as they say. Um, critics less so, giving it a slightly rotten fifty nine percent of Rotten Tomatoes. Mm-hmm. Uh, lower was the forty six on Metacritic. Um, there were defenders that loved it. I think it has a ninety five for like the aud- It's too. Both are too. Like the mm-hmm. critics one's too low, and the, the like the the fan with the audience one is too high. Mm-hmm. It's just everybody's extreme. I uh, got an A from Cinema Score. Blah, Every, blah. Everybody's Marvel pilled now. Yeah, it's just like that thing where like Sam Jackson walks in as Nick Fury, and everyone goes, "Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I know that guy." It's like that. It is. They like throw the, it. The they worst throw an NES in the background. The and you're worst like, oh, I had one of those. ever. They're like a Yoshi egg pops out. They're like, oh, Yoshi's. Gonna... We saw like a hundred Yoshis like twenty minutes ago. Did everybody forget in the movie? Okay. Yeah, is Yoshi gonna be a character? Or are they gonna be disposable like they are in the game? Yeah, Yoshi's a species, not a character. I yeah. stand by. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> as much as I loved him when I was little, um, uh, it's no OG, um, nor anywhere close to a Spider Verse or Lego movie. No, don't think it's on that caliber. The Super Mario Brothers movie is both. The 1993 one is both better than the regular Mario Bros. Oh, yeah. movie and Blade Runner. So <laughs> it is. Yeah, <laughs> come at me. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, you know, nothing we say matters because it was also the highest gro- grossing fucking theater event of the year uh, until Barbie or Barbenheimer, mm-hmm. um, accumulating over 1.3 billion at the box office. Um, this breaking records for Illumination and video game adaptations. It was the top third in domestic weekend for animation, number one for that in Japan. Uh, they had the money. And this doesn't include home releases or their contract uh, with uh, Peacock, whatever that deal was. Um, so obviously there, uh, there are going to be sequels and spinoffs coming, you know, due to its success. Uh, they just have to wait for that pesky writer strike to end. Uh, but also, talks are happening that their other characters and franchises will get uh, theirs too. Um, for instance, The Legend of Zelda. Uh, on November 7th, 2023, an official report from Nintendo to their investors stated that at long last, a live action uh, translation of everyone's favorite pointy eared warrior was indeed coming to the silver screen. Why live action? <laughs> That's so much harder to do. I know. <laughs> it's gonna get the just treatment. get illumination to do a Zelda movie. It would, it would That's what cute. I thought would have been cute and fine. Yeah. Now you're gonna make like Game of Thrones, but with Link in it. It's- also, I did that. Did what happened with the thing with Netflix? That fall through? I'm sure it did. Huh? I don't know. What so Netflix this, is this was um everything up. This was met with some scrutiny. Scrutiny. Yeah. While Miyamoto seems uh. He's, he seems excited. My man's too and happy he, about a lot of stuff. Yeah, he is, yeah. Because he, he tweets, he's like, this is Miyamoto. Everything yeah. is... Yeah. He's, Everybody he's needs to be more like Kojima. Just. Yeah. I, <laughs> Where they're really happy about uh, their life, but miserable about their job. <laughs> Everybody needs to be more like him. Yeah. Where he's just like I he bought. Just, he loves he loves listening to records and watching movies, and then yeah, all of his tweeted, games he are so like miserable. A, he tweeted like a week ago. He's like, I bought the twenty the twentieth anniversary reissue of Evanescence his first album. I'm like, cool, dude. <laughs> I did see that. Yeah, <laughs> he's a great follow. Yeah. Um. So who's at the helm? Um. Th- and this is why enthusiasts are wary. Uh. Supposedly Sony is co-financing the project. This is interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh. Interestingly enough, the director is Wes Ball. Uh, most known for the Maze Runner trilogy. Um, its writer is Derek Connolly of Jurassic World and Rise of Skywalker fame. 
Cool. Uh, and it's being produced by Avi Arad, who we have to thank for Morbius, uh, Uncharted, and the still stuck in hell Borderlands movie. Um, he is credited on all the Spider Man stuff and the old Blade and X Men entry, so this could go either way. Also, Connolly did write Safety Not Guaranteed and Kong Skull Island, to be fair. Uh, their relationship really began years ago with him penning the Detective Pikachu film. And, uh, and that was, yeah. That was, that was right. fine. That was fine. Um, but uh, I don't know. That has been your Nintendo Movie Minute. It was longer than a minute, but okay. It was. <laughs> uh, um, we'll watch The Legend of Zelda do a commentary when that comes out. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait for it to be a train wreck. <laughs> That's such a bad idea. It, it, the the funny thing is to announce that right now while Zelda is at the peak of its like acclaim. What? Then... It might end up being this generation's 1993 Mario movie. Ooh, uh, yeah. yeah. Please, I, the other, here's the funny thing that the last uh, point, was like, what if we made Zelda it? like Lord of the Rings was... and then they fuck it up? <laughs> I thought the whole but point in a hilarious way was to continue with the animation. The, yeah, because yeah. they want they were talking about like. Oh, maybe we'll do a Smash thing because we want to make a Donkey Kong movie and a spin-off Luigi movie and, and like a Kirby movie. Yeah, yeah, and a Kirby, and the Star Metroid movie. All come in, yeah. yeah. Um. Uh. Now we have loot boxes. Um. Uh. A million updates, but we can skip it. Yeah. Uh. All right. Sp- speaking of the Mario guys, uh, the Nintendo PlayStation. Uh, I still see it popping up every now and then uh, online, uh, making its way around to trade shows. Um. There are tech hobbyists out there attempting to homebrew software for it, which is. Pretty sweet, like you know, pretty sick. Um, our first microtransactions is in the clear for updating. The next subject, however, is Gearbox and Borderlands. Um, the aforementioned movie adaptation has yet to stumble its way into the cinema. I feel August like I see that every year. Yeah. Um, next, we'll tell you how it is. Next update. Yeah. Um, because it's apparently coming out August twenty twenty four. No idea what the fuck is going on there. Filming literally wrapped up on that back in June twenty twenty one. Yeah. Um, in January 2023, we learned through press statements that they, uh, the cut they had was being prepped to go through weeks, uh, through two weeks of reshoots. Um, this led by Deadpool director Tim Miller due to Eli Roth's commitments to that Thanksgiving slasher, um, which has like an 80 on Rotten Tomatoes. I know. I saw that. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck. <laughs> um, that's how you know he's taking the position seriously. And th- mm-hmm. that was, uh, that was yeah, that, that's one of the Grindhouse. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Because they spun. They they already. Did it with uh, Hobo with a Shotgun, Machete, twice. Mm-hmm. So we just need werewolf women of the SS and don't. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't Thanksgiving have somebody fucking a turkey in that? Probably. All right. Sounds like Eli Roth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Roth did retain uh, his involvement, giving Miller his blessing. New pages to the script were written. Although as if things weren't precarious enough for what that uh, final product would be, this past June, co-writer of its screenplay, Greg Mazin, partnered with Neil Druckmann on the HBO Last of Us series, took his name off the project, um, with the credit instead replacing him with, um, with the pseudonym uh, uh, Joe Zombie. Uh, Mazin did deny that the alias was his, but it sure gives the impression that he wants to distance himself from this turkey. Uh, him likely not wishing to ruin his credibility following The Last of Us' you know, success. And Chernobyl. Uh, yeah, and Chernobyl. Yeah, yeah. Uh, don't worry, though. The idol Sam uh, Le- Levingston was brought in for some punching up. Cool. <laughs> Outside of Hollywood, um, Gearbox was uh, restructured this past August. There are now four divisions under Embracer Group, who's just doing so well, by the way. Um, but there's Gearbox Software for Games, Gearbox Studios for Media Productions, Gearbox Publishing, uh, self-explanatory there, and Gearbox Properties that manages their, you know, intellectual, yeah, IPs. Mm-hmm. Uh, together, they are all known as Gearbox Entertainment. They also oversee its subsidiaries like Cryptic Studios and whatnot with the offices in San Francisco, Shanghai, Montreal, and uh, Quebec. Their main headquarters are still in Fresno, Texas. Hey, um, Embracer's doing poorly, but Gearbox is responsible for the one hit they had. Yeah. Remnant 2 was it's Gearbox true. Publishing. Yeah. Um, so that's that. Only time will tell for old Randy Pitch. Uh, as for Battleborn, uh-huh, the disaster of a uh, FPS MOBA hybrid that Gearbox released in 2016 that we covered on our series, uh, its servers shut down since um, January 31st, 2021, were silently revived, albeit in a closed form, thanks to a demented, uh, I mean dedicated, group of talented fans during this recent fall. So... You go, nerds. Um, 
Also, uh, Austin, like just before starting, uh, you brought up that a leak may have occurred. Yeah, uh, it's, in, it's a leak. In response to, or in, it's regarding a, some Gearbox properties. It's a, it, yeah. There was a, an employee of Gearbox who accidentally on their LinkedIn put that they worked on recent entries in the Borderlands franchise, Borderlands 4 and Tiny Tina's Wonderlands 2. Neither of which have been officially announced. Why not? I so, thought they were just on DLC trains for them still. I don't know. It's been did a he, while. Did either of them do? Borderlands 3 did really well. Did it? Okay. And, I guess t- I just, and I Tiny Tina and Wonderlands definitely did well enough to earn a sequel. So sure. that. I don't neither know of which had the play. tale of two in any... No, of course not. Well, you know, there's people out there that play 3. But, uh... We don't talk of that. Um, I mean, three is nowhere near. I know. I, I, I'm, I haven't played three. I don't know why I'm being so like harsh. It's not good. I, I like one and two, um, and uh, and tales obviously, um, not new tales. Hatred, Polybius, Madden, and Hong Kong '97 are good. Um, this uh, well, did a another curse strike one of the that they're football athletes recently that I wasn't aware of? No, 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 no. Right, good. Uh, <laughs> Had to be sure. They killed the Madden curse by putting John Madden on the cover, and then he died. <laughs> <laughs> no, they put him on the cover after yeah, he died. Yeah. But no, they uh, maybe that that is how you undo the curse. Yeah, his death. Yeah, you put on somebody who's already like has yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, the Resident Evil franchise continues its legacy of kicking ass with this year's RE4 reboot. Uh, Eve Online is still uh, insane, I presume. Um, yep. Frederick Newton's uh, latest down the rabbit hole about it was just uploaded on YouTube. Did not watch it. Ago. It's six no, hours it's long. six hours long. Yeah, I bet that examination is fairly in depth to say the least. Break your videos up into chapters. Yeah, for the love of God. Seriously, YouTube is not that good at tracking where I am in your video, and I cannot watch that in one. Oh, second. that shit is so fucking annoying. Yeah. yeah. Um, back to you, Austin, on the voice actor strike. Okay, we spoke on in 2019. Definitely some mm-hmm. revisiting of that uh, these past several months. Yes, so the voice actor strike that we covered in 2019 was in 2016 and 17, I believe. Yeah. The deal was made in 2017, and it was a three-year deal. And then in 2020, mostly due to the pandemic and video games not really being made, they kind of just renewed that deal for another three years. And then so it was up to be renewed in on November 7th, 2023 was when the, the deal expired. Um, and then earlier this year on July, I should say in May, don't have an exact date because it's not important to SAG. Uh, there was a WGA or Writers Guild of America strike. There sure was. In Hollywood. <laughs> All the writers went on strike. Um, followed two months later in July on July fourteenth, twenty twenty three, where SAG AFTRA, or as we covered, Screen Actors Guild and American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, went on strike in Hollywood, in you know in support, um, with their writer friends. Um, now we could talk about this for an entire two hours, so I will skip this part of the strike. Okay. Uh, the WGA strike is over. It ended on September 27th. Yeah, not even a month. And um, the SAG-AFTRA Hollywood strike ended on November 9th, a couple weeks ago. The deal was made, I should say. I don't know if the union has ratified it yet because there's some sketchy shit about AI in there. There always is. I don't know if you heard about this. Uh... There's like a thing where you don't necessarily... Basically, the studios, if you go to be hired and then they slip into the contract that you need to be scanned so that you can be used for AI oh, in the future. Jesus. Yeah, you know, you told me about that. They Trojan horse some nefarious shit in there. Um, <laughs> basically, well, they got rid of that. Oh, that's what I was going to Now they, like need, this they need permission, but basically it's like you can be fired off a movie if they want to use AI on you in any way and you say no. That's allowed in the in the current sag after thing. Yes. So... A lot of uh, union members not too happy about that. No, I bet. Um, this is for Hollywood, not voice actors. Voice actors are part of SAG, and the whole union votes on everything. But you're striking against um, basically a, like a governing body. like a So the, the Hollywood one is against the AMTPT, 
which is American Movie and Television Producers Association or whatever, Mm -hmm. not for video games. Video games, you're dealing with the ESA, as we covered in our episode. So, uh, and the ESA must have been sweating bullets. Uh, Well, they're sweating bullets over a lot of things. (laughs) Yes, well, yes, they are, and we will get to them later. Um, But the ESA must have been sweating bullets, and they had every right to because a couple months after the sag after strike against the AMTPT, on September 25th, 2023, sag after members voted 98% in favor of a strike against the ESA and, and the ratification of the Interactive Media Agreement, which is the thing that's set to expire. Now, this does not mean that they are on strike, and as of writing, they are not on strike. They're still able to work. They are in negotiations. And I have a couple of quotes here. sag after National Executive Director and Chief Negotiator Duncan Crabtree Ireland, which is a great name, said <laughs> after after five rounds of bargaining, it has become abundantly clear that the video game companies aren't willing to meaningfully engage on the critical issues. Compensation undercut by inflation, unregulated use of AI, and again, safety. I remain hopeful that we will be able to reach an agreement that meets members' needs, but our members are done being exploited, and if these corporations aren't willing to offer a fair deal, our next stop is the picket lines. Now, Chief Contract Officer Ray Rodriguez said, Between the exploitive use of AI and lagging wages, those who work in video games are facing many of the same issues that those who work in film and television. True. The strike authorization makes an emphatic statement that we must reach an agreement that will fairly compensate these talented performers, provide common sense safety measures, and allow them to work with dignity. Our members' livelihoods depend on it. The sixth, he mentions the five rounds of bargaining. That was before the vote for the strike. Okay. That's why they voted to strike. Yeah. Um, they're still bargaining. The sixth round of bargaining took place right after that vote on September 26th to 28th. No deal was, strike, uh, was reached. Although the IMA, Interactive Media Agreement, which was set to expire on November 7th, 2023, was extended a full year to November 7th, 2024 to allow negotiations to continue. There was another, a seventh round of bargaining. Seven times the charm. Yeah, on October 16th, 2023. As of this recording, I have not found any evidence of how that went, but uh, seemingly not well because it's Still, no, it's yeah. at <clears throat> we're more than a month out and I have not heard any news about anything being reached. So similarly to how the streaming services and movie studios were hemorrhaging money, I don't think that video game companies that are laying off programmers <laughs> are going to be too willing to over to to up the compensation for performers. So, I it I it was before the the gaming industry became a part of this conversation. I remember you uh, briefly like bringing up to me one night. Like uh, you mentioned that like oh well, if actors can't work. They can't um uh, go on press junket tours. Yes. Or, or in promotional thing. It's like. Are we going to see the end result? The end result of this, like months later, years later, like more celebrity appearances and casting in games for a bit, because that allows them to still make money. But you know, but then, then yeah. it got more tangled. And then, no, because I think I said that, but but the weird thing is, like, uh, it's SAG. Yeah. So if you're a, an, still on a screen. If you're a SAG member, you can't cross the picket line, even yeah. if you're not a video game voice actor. So oh, if they right. want to hire fucking Mads Mikkelsen, mm-hmm. he's not a video game voice actor. Yeah. He's been in a couple, but he's not a video game voice actor, but he still can't cross the picket line because he's part of SAG. Right. Yeah. And so the, the, the interesting thing would be like, like I said, I don't know as of right now, I don't know how negotiations are going, but let's say they go so poorly that the video game voice actors decide to strike like December 1st. They can't go to the game awards then, I don't think. Oh. I don't know how yeah, award okay. ceremonies work, but like if you're presenting, like if you're there yeah. promoting a trailer or presenting, I don't has know. Has that ever happened? Has that ever overlapped with anything like the Oscars or the Golden Globes? Like those are written and those are actors that are promoting. Technically, um, I don't know how they classify it, but I don't think the Oscars count. But the weird thing about the Game Awards is that the uh, they're it's a it's promotion, right? Yeah. So like, 
That's what I'm saying. Like all award shows, are. you know, like they like at the Summer Games Fest when Nicolas Cage fucking walked out to yeah, promote yeah. Dead by Daylight or whatever. Like or That's like Keanu point. Reeves coming out at the Microsoft thing to promote Cyberpunk. Like they couldn't yeah. do that. And I imagine that there will be people like that at the Game Awards. So. That's the avenue to do that. That's so Jeff avenue. Keighley would have to pivot. Oh, I don't envy him I'm figuring that out. <laughs> uh. Nothing to add to microtransactions, too, except that uh, Poop Slinger's value for a sealed copy is currently sitting at a whopping $3,440, according to tracker app GameEye. Uh, eBay has unsold ones for tens of thousands. Then it's uh, the Mirai Botnet, and then a Tetra Saga. <laughs> mm-hmm. So back to Movie Land. Uh, as the fascinating history of the iconic puzzle game was retold in uh, biographical movie form. Simply titled Tetris. Uh, let the record show that we we did it first. Uh, but no, we of course watched it. Uh, it was super entertaining. Um, what's most interesting to me uh, is that it was it pretty closely follows the real events and our podcast it's, series up to a point, and then it just become it goes off the rails and becomes a dramatized say, Cold War crime. I color. will say it is accurate where it needs to be accurate yeah, and, and it, fun where it needs to be exactly, fun. I think it, it did a good. Like, yeah. I think it did a good job of changing the story to suit being a fun movie when it needed to Agreed. and sticking to the story when it needed to. I think that's how you should do it. Yeah. And, and you think I take umbrage with that pivot, um, except that the fantastical elements are so intentionally over the top. Like even the vis- the visuals sort of like address where Dude, fact and fiction bending occur. Alexei Pizhitnov <laughs> in a car chase is so funny. Yeah. So when else stupid. are you going to see him uh, take uh, Nintendo's then president Howard Lincoln on a wild fucking yeah. like, through Moscow streets? Like, yeah, yeah, that was great. Um, it's based phenomenally well for the genre. Like, I didn't expect a Tetris biopic to keep a room full of people so engaged, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed a Taron Egerton as Hank Rogers. Yeah, it's not like a brilliant movie, but it no. is fun. It is fun. And it, they it, covered the best parts of the story and yeah. made them accessible to a broader audience. Like, so... So yeah, th- thumbs up for the Tetris movie. It gets my fanboy stamp of approval along Man. with my Tetris loving partner. And and shout out to director John S. Bard and uh, writer Noah Pink. And I guess mm-hmm. Apple too for funding it though. As far as, as far as accuracy goes, uh, both the actual Rogers and um, uh, Pajitnov said via interviews that they were able to review the script beforehand and each made suggestions for changes. Um, but they also knew that it was meant to be heightened reality and not so much reality reality. Mm-hmm. Um. Rogers noted how there were several sequences that didn't transpire in real life, further clarifying that it's Hollywood for you, basically. Not to discredit the on-screen truths either when they were uh, when they were present. Um, for example, it was his uh, idea to um, the, the fact that it was his idea to bundle the title in with the the, the Game Boy over Super Mario Land. That scene's in there, mm-hmm. uh, and it did capture the brooding tone of his time spent in then Soviet Russia trying to get the rights. Well, um, and, and that was heavily emphasized. Uh, they just mashed that into the like you know more outlandish, like the fantasy aspects. Um, the end result will still get you to the same destination, you know, more or less. Uh, there was a tiny bit of pushback from them uh, with Raj um, then uh, concluding his take by saying, quote, they tried their best to accept our changes when they had to, um, when they had to do with authenticity, but when it started to getting into uh, creative embellishing, or sorry, creative uh, flourishes like the car chase and all that, it was like, Okay, now that's all them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I get his complaints, although the movie does portray him as kind of a baller, so he probably isn't too upset. Yeah. <laughs> that and the critical reception was solid. Mad solid. Uh, higher than anything tied to a video game normally. Um, it beat Mario, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, although it unfortunately was unable to um, nab a nomination at this year's Keeley's. Uh, initially, I chalked this up to it not being a direct adaptation of the game itself. Like the others, but then Andrew pointed out that fucking Gran Turismo uh, being on there is like maybe yeah, this is the same kind of deal. Yeah, so maybe this was likely more due to just nobody using Apple Plus ever. They should have called it yeah. Tetris colon based on a true story. <laughs> yeah, they should have. That was a problem. But God damn it, that would have been the only competition to The Last of Us. Yeah. Uh, that, that or it would have at least gotten rid of a uh, Twisted Metal, but on there. Uh, so... Oh, oh, there's there's uh there is an ongoing lawsuit that was filed in August of 2023 by chief editor of Gizmodo Dan Ackerman against Apple claiming the script illegally copied his 2016 book The Tetris Effect, the game that uh hypnotized the world. I wanted to read that. I referenced it on our episode. Yeah. So I pulled, but uh he's asking the court for 4.8 million in monetary damages or 6% of the film's 80 uh million dollar budget. 
and then it's kind of a bit ridiculous in my opinion. You, you can't own a true story. I mean, otherwise, you know, we could sue. Like, so unless the car chase was Dan's idea, I don't see him having much of a leg to stand on. I don't. Know. Yeah, but at the same time, like, it's Apple, so who gives a shit if they lose four point eight? Oh, sure. I, 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 I'm not telling. Like, yeah. I'm not protecting the big man. I'm just saying it's like that story. There are numerous books published on like the the, the history of Tetris, like. I yeah, bet they probably I mean, I, pull from. I'd like, be curious to see what his evidence is. If there's like a something he has to point to that's like direct uh-huh. evidence, yeah, rather yeah. than it just being like. I guess hey, I shouldn't took- say I haven't read it. When yeah. I do read it, I can I can then I can verify. Yeah. You like, you took my I can say. like you took my research. It's like they probably did their own research. They talked to the people who were involved. Exactly. Like. But if, he, if there's, like, an, a specific line that, like, they use or something in his yeah. book or, I don't know. And I think uh, Dan Ackerman also spoke to them. So it's possible that, like, well, if you're interviewing the same person about, like, in, like, two different days about the same event, it's possible yeah. they gave the same yeah. quote. Um, yeah. Um, also, we should do a commentary of this for the podcast sometime. We'll get Dory on. But the Tetris um, movie? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I agree. <laughs> Uh, lastly, um, I want to reiterate uh, how uh, correct you and your mom uh, were, Austin, in that the new Tetris of the N64 might be my new favorite version. Yeah, <laughs> the rules. soundtrack is fucking incredible. The square mechanic is rad. Uh, collecting the wonders is addicting. And it was the first installment to feature four players and the yep. whole piece. Um, plus, it has that insane rant buried in the code where that disgruntled employee made all that ASCII art of pot leaves or whatever. Yeah, cool. It's great. <laughs> um, so now on to Twitch Plays Pokemon... Uh, the only story I want to toss in here that's sort of adjacent is, uh, do you remember at one point in the episode we talk about when the fish were doing streams? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I just needed an excuse to cover this. And what might be the greatest news headline of all time, this from Andy Chalk at PC Gamer on October 18th, 2023. Quote, a dog named Peanut Butter is going to speedrun a Nintendo platformer at AGDQ 2024. <laughs> yep. I don't remember anything about this. Um, the article also opens with, uh, there's no rule that it says a dog can't play baseball and there's no rule that a dog can't speed run a game. Yeah. <laughs> I finally have, um, hope for us as a nation yet. Um, but yeah, the, the pup is a Shiba Inu. Um, and the game in question is Gyromite for the NES. Uh, viewers are going to lose it, rightfully so. Uh, the run is unassisted. Uh, before you ask how, it is also a cooperative effort. His companion, JSR, is scheduled to perform it with him. According to the human, he did indicate which buttons to press on the floor control pad, but all inputs were made by PB. Quote, no assistance, um, auto fire, macros, or save states were used. Just years of training. And props to him. That's diligence. Sheepas can be bratty. Trust me, Mm -hmm. I know. Um, And this isn't his first time spent with it either. The good boy's previous record is 25 minutes and 29 seconds. So best of luck to JSR and Peanut Butter. I believe in you. Also, make dog assistant an official category for the event, please. Yeah, I love I'm the speedrunning community so much. <laughs> so be on the lookout. This is uh, January 14th to the 21st um, this winter. Uh, Okie doke. Um, we can jump past the guy game and Miss Pac-Man. Valve still has so much. Uh, we do have another episode on the way hosted by our regular guest, Andrew. Uh, stay tuned for that. Probably in Q1 next year. Q1. I don't know if this the industry's corrupted my brain. Financial uh, quarter? Yeah. <laughs> he's been hard at work for, uh, for a while on it, so he's yeah, probably itching to educate us on their doing. We feel bad. Sorry, Andrew. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he has to keep making updates. I was talking to him because they announced... <laughs> oh, yeah, because the Steam OLED just Yeah, dropped, they just so. announced the Steam OLED. He's like, I have to add that. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll, do the, epi- we'll like do the episode do before show. Valve drops more hardware, I promise. Uh, <laughs> uh, SimCity, still dead. Duke Nukem, still dead. Hopefully. Uh, oh, boy. Oh, boy. That'll segue us perfectly into E3, Austin. What's going on with that? It's still dead? <laughs> uh, deader than dead. Uh, yeah, okay, they're so. Real, they're real fucking dead. In our last update, <laughs> we talked about how E3 uh, missed 2020, 2021, and 2022 due to the pandemic, but yeah. they were set to make a roaring return. Mm-hmm. 2023 was going to bring <laughs> it back. And I say was because activate me in between our last update and March 2023, Microsoft, Nintendo, Sony, Ubisoft, Sega and Tencent all pulled out of E3 in addition to EA and Activision who already were pulled out. You know who didn't back out? Konami. Yeah. (laughs) Um, 
the one time they're like yeah but that's like switzerland in world war ii they're like we're just not gonna say anything yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh now as we mentioned last time too the esa had signed a deal with reed pop uh who is the the corporation that hosts comic-con <laughs> and as well as pax to make the e3 show uh, the, the e3 2023 show happen despite this on march 20 march 30th 2023 the esa announced that they had officially canceled e3 after rumors had been swirling for so, months since all the high that. profile departures and they also announced that they were ending their deal with reed pop prematurely since it was initially a multi-year deal it was supposed to cover e3 2023 2024 and 2025 Wow, that, they they certainly did cut that relationship no, short. Cut it that short. Was, um, <laughs> they even get through a, one. In addition to also cutting short a deal with the LA Convention Center for 2023 and 2024. Oh yeah, because if you don't reserve that space that weekend, mm-hmm. like that goes to. They canceled their spot at LA for 2023 out. in March when E3 was supposed to be in June. So I imagine they lost quite a bit of money on a yeah. deposit or something there. But they also informed them that 2024 would not be happening. And the only other news that I can find is that according to GameIndustry.biz, uh, they say that they have reports from sources that the ESA is still working on a complete reinvention of the show for 2025. No, they aren't. <laughs> no. But that according to GamesIndustry.biz, there are yeah. early talks to... Just completely skip 2023, 2024, and bring it back in 2025. I imagine. We'll fucking see. I imagine it'll probably just straight up just be like Comic Con at that point. Like it. Yeah. It's not going to be. I, I mean, it does make me sad. I like D3. And I. Any. I mean, it, it'll never be what it once was. No. I think Keeley's just like laughing all the way to the back. Dancing on the grave. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I. I mean, if any, like, at least we still have Summerfest. He tried. He did. You know, he totally did. Because he was supposed to do 2022. I just like the the idea. He was. Yeah. uh, I just like the idea of, like, having a reason for everybody to congregate uh, to one place and then one singular, you know, like, and then also be able to, um, you know, like, condense the news cycle a bit together. Everybody kind of pedestals each other up because of competition. But the crazy thing... And it's good for handshaking for, you know, The crazy thing is, like, Gamescom still exists, TGS still exists, and, like, PAX PAX Prime exists, so if... if Maybe the rest of these will just grow. If, for whatever reason, the games industry all of a sudden decided, hey, you know what? Actually, we kind of do want this place where we can all gather and share our news. Just convert PAX Prime into that. Totally. Go around the ESA yeah, yeah. entirely. Because that was the, they wanted to make E3 more of an in-person event too, and PAX has already been that for yeah. weeks. Yeah. The press is already going to PAX, like. Yeah, and reporting on it. And, and like, doing panels and reporting on it, so yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I think I've said this before, but it's like, what, Hearthstone was, like, announced at PAX. You can, you can do... Overwatch was playable for the first time. Right. Yeah, yeah, you can do your reveals there. So now we're back to our third microtransactions. Uh, nothing there. Uh, but I bet we could, well, we could mention that the, um, that this was the first year that the annual FIFA title. I was going to say, yeah, that's from, the only. It's EAFC uh, now and FIFA can go fuck what, itself. No, I thought it was sport. Wait. They had to change the brand. Wait, uh, EAFC. EA Sports FC. EA Sports FC. Yeah, that's yeah. Stupid name, but... And I'm, and FIFA lost uh, th- out on a hundred and fifty million dollars for their just the use of their name. So uh, they worked out go, for them. They can go fuck themselves. Hold Cause on. I, yeah, because I'm sure it didn't slow down sales or affect the. No, it sold better. It sold better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what about review scores? They still they still seemed mediocre. Of all of the EA Sports titles, I think FIFA might actually be the highest scoring one. It's depressing. It's better than Madden, and it's better than NHL for sure. Yeah. So, well, I think FIFA <laughs> might be the only one that's like still in the eighties in yeah. Metacritic. Well, the NBA. Oh, that's sorry. That's a uh, that's two K. Two K. Those also don't. Those uh, also don't go above eighty. Yeah. No. No. If anything, I, I don't think they go above seventy. <laughs> um, for the StarCraft match fixing stuff, I'd rather we get Chris's input on that another like mm-hmm. another day. Keeping up with that shit is honestly just out of my league. Um, he'll tell you all about professional Starcraft and he will, uh, it came up the other night at like three in the morning. Mm-hmm. 
Um, don't need anything new uh, for the Virtual Boy or Prey. Uh, mm. Oh no, Prey! What's I just up, I just want to mention. Hold on, I just want to mention that <laughs> okay. uh, we've learned through uh, Death of a Game Nerd yeah. Slayer Studios, yeah, yeah. great great YouTube channel that. Yes. Redfall was made by That's right, human ex human head guys. It, Redfall was made by both the developers of the Prey reboot and the original Prey. Together, yeah, together. together. That is why I completely forgot yeah, that, that yeah. came up in that video. I think we even both like looked at each other. Yeah, I was like, it. what the fuck, really? <laughs> How did those two good studios make such a shit game? Do you game? think there was I know, for real. Do you think there was any um uneasiness between them or animosity <laughs> no nah, i don't I think so there wouldn't be i just find that amusing um, i will say though that um that uh redfall will come up listen to our game of the year talks i'm not gonna tell you which category it's in but i think a, you can guess not a <laughs> yeah. positive one huh? yeah <laughs> if i have anything to say about it um happy 20th birthday to the engage uh i saw some psycho out there hacked the qd model into a universal bluetooth controller Awesome. Sick. Yeah. <laughs> also, other modders managed to port Wordle to it. Oh, cool. <laughs> you can't you can't kill the ironic fan communities. Keep at it, you psychos. Um a claims ba- backstory for now, and all four of our Halloween 2020 entries are Gucci. Alongside the trials and tribulations of the Xbox One and microtransactions, the fourth. See, we're flying now, my friend. Mm-hmm. Um G4 tragically lies dormant in its grave. Sidebar. <laughs> The t-shirt I bought from them during their revival was the worst merch I've ever received in my life. (laughs) It's almost kind of poetic. Uh, But I'm sad. Like, no lie, one cold wash cycle on dry uh, and dry on delicate turned inside out, just shredded the look right off. We made better shirts (laughs) for this show. Yep. Um, uh, Yeah, those cheap bastards. And I went back to their online store just for curiosity's sake, and the URL was busted. But uh, my endless kudos to the channels back archiving their original broadcasts on YouTube, though. It rules. Uh, they even leave the um, the bumpers and commercials in. Perfect mm-hmm. to fall asleep to. Um, so then it's Night Trap. Uh, oh, no. Wait. Nothing. Yeah, yeah, we're good. The Oh, man, the two after are all you, baby. <laughs> mm-hmm. Austin, mm-hmm. what's up with uh, Billy Mitchell? How's, how's he doing? How's Billy do? Not great. Uh, okay. So I'm going to say up front, thank you to Carl Jobs, but dude. <laughs> now he's being sued, so I get it. But <laughs> all right. So I think we mentioned this last year. In the lawsuit between Billy Mitchell and Twin Galaxies, which is ongoing, we got to an important milestone, which was that the trial has not yet begun. Yeah, they kept but depositions moving. happened. All right. So we got a lot of information out of Billy Mitchell's deposition. Um, now, a lot of this focuses on the famous mortgage brokers tape, which we talked about. I don't know if you remember. Yes. Yeah. He went to a mortgage broker convention in Florida and beat a high score, and there was a tape of it. Billy's claim is that the, f- the footage, which was called into question as being MAME footage, which we also covered last year, and in the... Uh, I mean, not last year. We covered it in the episode. Uh, it was called out as being MAME footage because of the way that the screens loaded in. Yes, yeah, um, I remember that. Billy Mitchell, in his lawsuit, claims that the footage didn't matter as he had multiple witnesses sign papers saying that they saw the score happen. Uh, the suspicious part of this is that the witnesses included Billy's girlfriend as well as Todd Rogers and Todd Rogers' girlfriend. Reputable sources. Yeah. As evidence... On behalf of Twin Galaxies, event organizers released photographs that nobody knew existed, especially Billy Mitchell, of showing him uh, giving a thumbs up and shaking hands with people at the event, as well as Todd Rogers. All right. But that's not important. What's important is that in the photos, two (laughs) things come to light. Number one. (laughs) Sorry, this is like JFK. Yeah. A camera can be seen pointing at. The, where the player would be sitting, meaning that, and the mortgage brokers Back didn't, into the left. didn't have any footage of him playing it. The, but what there, happened there, was a, there was a camera so, that should have been recording him uh-huh. pointed at where he would be sitting, <laughs> um, and that's not part of the mortgage brokers tape. In addition, the machine can be shown, which, show, which shows a tall red joystick. 
Now, crazy people out there who are obsessed with Donkey Kong will know that Donkey Kong joystick. is a short black joystick yeah. that is a four-way joystick. Modded. He tampered. Yes. Oh. People tracked down the joystick model <laughs> of the red and found out that it is an eight-way joystick. Unfair advantage. Which does, according to Carl Jost, yeah. does allow for a distinct advantage when climbing ladders and dodging barrels as you can input Shit. diagonals. Shit. Which you can't in the original game. This is not regulation. Yes. <laughs> Unfair these, advantage. These photos of the red joystick were submitted to Twin Galaxies as evidence to submit the trial. But the thing is, you don't necessarily have to... Depositions are evidence. So you don't have to give the other side evidence before a deposition. So they held the photos, did not show them to Billy Mitchell, and in his deposition questioned him over and over again about what parts were on an original Donkey Kong machine, what color were the buttons, what colors were the joysticks. So this was a different cabinet. And he said multiple, yes, he said multiple times, it's original hardware. If I I saw anything other than that little black joystick, I would have turned and ran. I don't play on anything but original hardware. But then they showed him the picture and he said, I don't remember it being red. (laughs) Um, Now, Uh, in addition, Robert Childs, friend of Billy and owner of arcade game sales, swore in court that he provided the machine... That was used for both the Mortgage Brokers tape as well as the King of Kong tape. It was the same machine, and it was the one with the red joystick, meaning that now potentially both scores would be null and void because it's not original hardware. Yeah. Uh, Robert Childs was also, we talked about him in the episode. He was the guy that was in the infamous board swap video that they said was a joke when they swapped out the boards and videotaped Mm it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Twin Galaxies then released a phone call between David Race and Billy Mitchell, which was shown, this phone call is wild. Uh, It shows Billy planning to submit an additional tape to Jace Hall of a score that is better than the Mortgage Brokers tape. Billy planned to submit the tape with no face recording, similar to the Mortgage Brokers tape, and no evidence that it wasn't being played on an emulator so that Jace Hall and the rest of people who quote-unquote hate him and make him to be the villain would accuse him of cheating again and potentially even ban him only so that he could submit evidence later that the tape was actually mag- legit. Um, guy's a madman. Now, <laughs> David Race, you may know from King of Kong, uh, he was the guy that got the phone call that Billy broke the score and sent in the tape. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I He's also scene. one of the best Pac-Man players in the world. That's right. And was originally a Billy defender and was planned to be part of Billy's oh, defense. Then he did his own research and decided to not be involved in the trial whatsoever. It's telling. Yes. Um, Billy then tried to sue David for recording the call. Uh, that is technically illegal if you don't disclose no. it, isn't it? The lawsuit was later dismissed uh, with legal fees raised with the help of Carl Jobst in in David's defense. Um, The call was made from Billy in Florida to David in Ohio. It is illegal. Oh, that's right. Each state has different policies on this. Yeah, it is illegal in Ohio to record or is illegal in Florida to record without consent. It is not illegal in Ohio. And since the recording was made in Ohio... But the the call, case man. was dismissed because it, it was legal. <laughs> um, oh, man, this then, is awesome. <laughs> it's like a Fincher movie. Then multiple witnesses were deposed for the lawsuit as well as Billy Mitchell, and none of their stories added up with what Billy said. Um, Billy claimed that a GameStop manager set up the board for the machine as well as the VCR to record the machine and the, the little tiny daughter boards necessary to record from an arcade machine to a VCR. Yeah. Uh, the GameStop manager claims that he installed the board and that nothing was connected to the VCR to ever record a tape. So once leading to, again, saying that the mortgage broker's tape was just main footage and was not actually recorded at the convention. In addition, two of the witnesses that Billy has for saying that the footage doesn't matter, I have witnesses, we're not, we're workers of the convention and we're not actually watching him. 
They were just working the convention and heard that he beat the score. Philly claims, and the video corroborates, that it took him two hours and 40 minutes to reach the score. Uh, He also claims that he achieved it in the afternoon between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., and that um, thousands of people were at the convention and were watching him achieve the score. The worker, who he dates as a witness, says they didn't see him playing. They hurt. They they claim he played for about fifteen minutes and then heard he had achieved it before people arrived at the convention. Which one is it? Those are very mm-hmm. like <laughs> opposing. Uh, we're not done yet. In addition, <laughs> uh, Billy claimed in King of Kong to receive a plaque from Namco, claiming him as video game player of the century. <laughs> what a title! The plaque was a wood plaque with a gold thing that had a letter on it. Do they show then, it in that? The RC? I don't know if they show it in there. There's pictures of it, though. Okay. Uh, and it has a little Pac-Man on it, because this, this was for him getting a Pac-Man score. Yeah. He went to TGS and got, like, a live Pac-Man score or whatever. The Twin Galaxies people requested that the plaque be submitted for evidence only to... for Billy to say that he doesn't know where the plaque is... Only for it to, it went missing for years, only for it to be found recently. At a thrift store. Carl Jobst, the man he is, did an extensive comparison of old pictures and new pictures, only to find that the plaques were had different measurements. <laughs> he fucking... And that the plaques potentially uh, were fake. Uh, allegedly were fake. And <laughs> also that the, the letter... That's on the plaque. It was supposedly says he's game player of the century. If you look at pictures of him holding it, you can clearly read that it's not. It's just congratulations on getting a Pac-Man high score. And the rest of it is about how important Pac-Man is to the video game industry or whatever. Um, sure. So then when Billy submitted evidence, all of a sudden two plaques existed, but he will not submit the actual physical plaques. Only a picture of the plaques, which is so resolution. You can't read what's oh, on them. And he says, my God, <laughs> and he also has a certificate from Twin Galaxies and Walter Day claiming that he's the video game player of the century, but not a plaque from uh, Namco. Nobody knows what the third pla- the other plaque from uh, Namco, the third plaque says, but it looks to be the same, albeit slightly smaller. So that's a lie there. Uh, also, to the- bringing oh. back Steve Wiebe, who Weebs. has... Until now, remains silent until he was subpoenaed for evidence. <laughs> um, like, is a witness or like what? Because Why? Billy, because there's a, I forget the guy's name. There's a guy who's in King of Kong. He made another documentary called King of Khan, uh, who is. Oh, yeah. I think we mentioned that. Yeah. The, um, he, so. Billy and him do not like each other. No. And the evidence the original, the, the original mortgage brokers tape that the Mame that was considered to be from Mame, what uh, was apparently gotten from him for evidence, and Billy claims that like he edited it because he hates Billy. So then they subpoenaed both the film crew of King of Kong and Steve Weeby to be like, "Yo, do you have footage of this at all?" And Steve Weeby produced a tape that he found in his garage that the film crew gave him after shooting, which happened before. Wow. Um, and he submitted that and there's an interview with him where he's just like, came a, out like Oh seven. Yeah. That's a, that's a while ago. Yep. Uh, and he base and then Billy was basically like, of course, Steve Weeby's going to tr- be against me. He's probably on the phone with this guy and that guy. And basically three people called Steve Weeby and were like, stay out of this. You don't need to be involved. Yeah. Then they subpoenaed him. And then he basically submitted the tape and was like, I'm out. I don't want to deal with this. I got like kids and shit. And, uh, that was it. That is uh, messier wait. than I ever expected. Last point. <laughs> okay. Uh, the trial was officially set to begin on October 27th, 2023. But Billy had it delayed until January twenty fourth, twenty twenty four. All right. Well, now we gotta. We'll come back. In addition, he also sued Carl Jones for defamation. Yes. And yeah. that trial is also ongoing. And according to Carl, he wants the trial to go because his team has evidence that it's not defamation. But Billy keeps delaying it. 
Gonna make good content though. Yeah. Oh yeah, Thanks great content. Uh, also, <laughs> Todd Rogers also tried to sue Twin Galaxies and Guinness and lost both lawsuits very quickly because he can't really? afford a lawyer and re- uh, represented himself, and he's an idiot. So <laughs> that's holy uh, shit. That's it on the Billy Mitchell update. <laughs> Hats off to you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> and now it's Unity. <laughs> no, I'd say so. Perhaps the most suicidal I have ever seen a company be uh, for this industry or any other, for that matter. Which is why we decided that a fuck up of that magnitude is perhaps more deserving of its own sequel episode. Yes. Uh, so please be on the lookout for that. We, I wrote. <laughs> Maybe I, we'll get Andrew back in for it. So I wrote an update for the Unity thing, and it ended up being three times the size of the rest of all of the updates that I've told you so far. <laughs> yeah. So I talked to Randy, and I was just like, "We should just make this its own episode because this episode." Yeah, you messed me about it. We'll go thing. like an hour longer <laughs> I if I like, talk about Unity. I was like, let's make sense. Uh, there, yeah. there, that makes sense. Let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> now we can uh, tiptoe past Rogue Warrior to a depressing one. Uh, Sean broke this news in our Discord, uh, and you predicted it, Austin. Um, a pillar of THQ has been shuttered. Uh, Volition, the wonderful talent behind Red Faction Saints Row, is no longer with us. Uh, after 30 years of servitude, um, but admittedly, as much as I'd love to exclusively blame Embracer for their poor leadership and dumbass business decisions, which both are true, uh, Volition did have um, their share of back-to-back misses, beginning with Agents of Mayhem in 2017 and then the Saints Row reboot in 2022. Both underperformed critically and commercially following long development cycles. They also um, performed poorly on uh, the platforms that they were released on because the frame rate was bad. <laughs> Um, yeah, the, the writing was unfortunately on the wall for them. Um, what's particularly shitty about all of this was how sudden it was to the workers. Um, they, uh, they just shared a public thread celebrating their anniversary, so they did not see this coming. Um, even post, uh, Embracer floundering once that multi-billion dollar contract, the Saudi deal, you know, fell apart uh, mm-hmm. earlier this summer in June. And so on August 31st, um, as a part of their parent company's quote unquote restructuring, uh, i.e. the big wig executives, you know, screwing up everything and as per usual the employees suffer. Volition was no more. Um don't fret though. I'm positive everyone lost the you know who lost their jobs will retain their health insurance till the end of the month. Use those twelve hours wisely. It just sucks. Uh fucking bracer. Uh also in this ownership of those key franchises got moved over to Flyon? Another subsidiary, formerly uh, K- uh, Koch Media. Yeah. So, I don't know. Coke Media. Coke. Koch. Rest in peace, boys. And that brings us to Spirits Within. Um, we're locked in there. Uh, watch out for Connect Part 2 soon. Um, I have no mouth, which uh, I want to get Newt back uh, on to, uh, in here to host another. That was a good time. Possibly Harvester for Halloween 2024. Mm -hmm. Um, speaking of cannibalism in games is staying strong. Thankfully, um, Camdrome is still taking a nap. Micro five, nothing there. Something about Camdrome. I don't know if we covered this before, but apparently I looked at the Camdrome subreddit. Apparently Ed McMillan claimed that he made Camdrome. Yes. The super, one of the super meat guys. Yeah. Right. Did we talk about that? We did, but he didn't, I don't know if he changed his story because initially he's like, uh, he's like, I didn't make it. I just know the people who who uh, did. Okay, so the so re- is he, on the Reddit yeah. there's a a clip of a tweet. I don't know if he was just he playing, said, you know, everybody along for the for the bit there, but uh he said, I got fifteen minutes to kill. Ask me anything on Twitter and someone said, oh, Will shit. we ever know what Cam Drum was supposed to actually be besides a horror game? And he said I'd love to know. Yes, I will start working on it again in the future. Camdrum was my horror game. I hope to remake it someday. Wow. So. I don't I don't know what's crazier about that story is that he says that it's still like alive in some way yeah, or that it's yeah. going to return uh or that like he he did change the story. I don't know if that was part of like the S, uh, the, uh, the ARG um but Yeah, yeah. Cuz when he, I think people did some uh, investigating and found out that he was involved, and then that's when he was like, 
Uh, and he's like, no, I'm not. Well, he's like, I am, but I'm just helping out. Like, there's a real secret crew of people that are actually yeah. uh, uh, behind Maybe this, it's like so. a Kojima uh, situation oh, yeah, the, with the, 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 whale the whale thing. Blue Whale Studios yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah. yep. Moby Dick. Um, all right, uh, we're up to Goldeneye. Yo. Um, my soul. Fantastic episodes. Um, obviously, everything we did with Elise was amazing. Uh, she mm-hmm. was such a delight and I cannot wait to have her back to talk about Mario Brothers 3, the other staple of my childhood. Um, I can't thank you and Matt enough as well. I'm still mm-hmm. riding high from that. Um, Elise, if you are listening, you rock and uh, I'm sorry we haven't reached out yet. Uh, just been busy next year. <laughs> yeah. Um, so just a mini update uh, in this uh, one that is also kind of a bummer, I'm afraid. Um Grazlu00, uh, a fellow GoldenEye lover slash content creator slash speedrunner slash programmer uh, who assisted in getting the true remaster we deserved, the XBLA version of GoldenEye, um, working on the the uh, the Xbox uh, Series um, S and X, to which I followed their directions and got it up and running to my excitement, shared that on April 6th, 2023, Microsoft had quietly shut down all all and any and all of the emulators available on their storefront, including Xena, the 360 one. And it shouldn't have to be said how bullshit that is, considering they aren't illegal. Um, but uh, yeah, even if you have those apps installed prior to the terms changing, it still won't launch. That and you'll be slapped with a warning message telling the user that you are violating their policy, an act that could potentially lead to your account getting permabanned. Yep. Daddy Mike, Mike Microsoft did later confirm this. Swapping your controller to development mode does bypass it, but that isn't free. I think it, how much is that? It's like hundred dollars, hundred bucks. Something? That's what it used to be for the the X and A stuff. So yeah, I don't know what it is now. So uh, you'll have to stick with your your PCs to play the optimal, you know, uh, version of Golden IW7. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, th- my like. Their strategy lately has been very anti-consumer friendly. It's the same with their unofficial controllers thing. I, yeah. I don't get the reasoning. They were previously, in my opinion, pretty good at that. The so. controllers thing was crazy because people were talking about like fighting game controllers, rightfully so. Yeah. Um, some steering wheels and whatnot. And steering wheels and and yeah, but I didn't realize that that also. So my headset that I use for my PC to talk on Discord and stuff, uh, yeah. broke. And I've been looking into getting a new one, and like one that would work for everything. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. all of the models, the 2023 models that are coming out now, all have two versions, and it'll be like this one's two hundred dollars like in the seventh generation again, and this one's two hundred and thirty dollars. And the two hundred thirty dollar one, the only difference is that it works on Xbox. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't care enough to ever use a headset on Xbox, so I'm going to buy the other one and just never play an online game on Xbox then. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what your policy is doing. Yeah. It's fucking strange. Um, in the meantime, check out the work uh, Grazlu00 uh, zero zero has been doing to port Perfect Dark to the PC. It's real impressive. Um, there uh, was also this story posted to Kotaku on November 7th, 2023 by Zach uh, Zwedzen. Uh, where writers of Edge Magazine sat down with uh, Haken Abrak and Christian Elverdam, uh, co-owners of IO Interactive, on their upcoming Bond title, and they claimed it was initially, quote, it, it, well, it was initially quite difficult uh, to convince the 007 IP holder uh, Eon Productions to invest in another video game for the character since they were worried it was just going to be another shooter. Yeah, um, they had to prove that they're not making a shooter. Yeah, which, yeah. first of all... Don't fucking stick your nose at what made you successful. <laughs> yeah. Nor should you shame an entire genre. Of course, the Hitman guys were known for cap- uh, like creating captivating scenarios far more realized than linear action. They were an ideal fit. And I totally understand Eon's dis- uh, satisfaction with the later franchise installments under Activision. Uh, those did put Bond games on hiatus for over a decade. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I read this pitch from Elverdam and got a little miffed, honestly. Um, wanting to pivot from what Goldeneye was doing on the N64 to a more secretive-oriented spy thriller is fine. However, stating that they wanted to focus on the titular character's ability to, quote, get in and out of a location without causing much collateral damage or engaging uh, in violence unless needed 
is hilarious to me because like, have you ever seen a Bond film, Christian? Big set pieces, shootouts, and chases like is what makes the the blend of the quieter and sneakier moments work. I have not seen all the Bond movies. Yeah. But like, the ones I have seen, that motherfucker destroys a lot and <laughs> kills a lot of people. Yeah, like, and a, and a video game based off that format needs this balance, if you, you know, yeah. if you ask me, like, because, you know, otherwise it'd be boring. So it's like, you know, I'm still very much interested to see what they do. It's just like, and I think they were experimenting um, with, like, like uh, stuff like that in the end of, um, Hitman 3, right? Like, there's like the train that it's like. Yeah, you know. if you play Hitman 3, you they can do a Bond game. There's a lot yeah, of set pieces. Yeah, I believe in There's them. a lot of set pieces. In I Hitman just 3. find that funny because I was just like, you, their impression of who this character is not like. Yeah. <laughs> not reflective of the, the you know, the film history uh, or the film catalog. But um, regardless, this dignified uh, approach did persuade the suits at Eon to lighten up on the property. And I was a fantastic developer, so here's hoping they can figure out the marriage of both sleuthing and explosions. Yeah. Um, you know, you need you need a dash Uncharted in there. Yeah. Um, so then it's Street Fighter the movie and Street Fighter the movie the game. You uh, skipped the Gizmondo. Oh my God! Did I skip the Gizmondo? You did. That's did our, that was our hundredth episode, dude. Yeah. Well, I don't I don't know if there's anything new on the Gizmondo. No, there's not. I'm yeah. just saying. You're right though. That's the one I should like draw the most. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like like oh. Well, thank you for reminding me. Um, I still, I, I did at one point try and find out the the current whereabouts of uh, fuck Stefan Stefan Erickson yeah. and could not pull anything up. So still in jail. Um, just don't know which jail or if he got out earlier or was trying to or anything. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. So yeah, the uh, the Street Fighter ones. There, there's. Uh, not much that could be amended there. Uh, although I do feel crummy for referencing Bob Mackey's podcast career without also bringing up uh, his co-host Henry Gilbert. So shouts out to him as um, as well. Uh, listen to Talking Simpsons and what a cartoon if you're in like deep dives in animation. Uh, oh, and uh, Kylie Minogue, our Cammy, just got nominated for another Grammy Award. <laughs> yep. This in the category of Best Pop Dance Recording for Potum Potum. I don't mm-hmm. know the song, mm-hmm. but go for her. Uh, even though that organization is a scam, I don't. I don't think this is her first Grammy. No, either. I meant to look into that, but yeah. Um, but ultimately, we're at dead bodies and drowned God. Still plenty uh, fresh in my mind. Uh, however, I do want to address one thing, and it ain't Dave's uh, rudely disparaging Dave Grohl's uh, musical prowess post Nirvana when I was distracted. He's one of the drumming goats. The man played on Queens of Stone Age songs for the fucking dead. Yeah, everything he's Modern Foo Fighters is bad though. Yeah, everything he's done that's not the Foo Fighters is great. <laughs> that's not what I said. That's what I said. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he was in uh, he had Nine Inch Nails for a little bit. Uh, so um, anyway, no uh, um, and uh, garbage one point. But um, he did ask a really important question once we stopped recording. Um, this in response to the intruder theory, as there was uh, of course no confession, but I neglected to specify that no items were taken or rummaged through at the house that night. No, it was just, it was just the murders. Yeah. Yeah. So further contesting the proposed idea that it was like a random home invasion. Um, Yeah. Like somebody went to steal and was like, Oh shit, there's somebody here and stabbed them. You're right. And then like, yeah, if it was an invasion, they went in with the intent to kill. Yes. Yeah. Uh, The slaying either had a purpose or was committed by Harry. Yeah. Yeah. Or Harry and Amanda, but probably Harry allegedly, allegedly. And lastly, lastly, finally, is the recent Midway. Um, one inclusion here that I want to make is uh, a story that only just uh, this month came to my attention. And uh, yes, I could have worked this into either the ESRB or Acclaim episodes, uh, you know, today. But fuck it, it felt more appropriate here. And I was wondering if you knew of this, uh, Austin. It, in an October 2022 article written by uh, David L. Craddock on IGN, a supposed uh, bloodier uncut upgrade of the original Mortal Kombat for the Super Nintendo was not just planned, but nearly completed back in 1993. Um, Only two copies are known to exist, and neither owner has any intention of parting with them. Uh, So yeah, this is wild. Everybody and their mom knows the the SNES edition of MK1 was infamously toned down in Mm -hmm. comparison to its uh, locked-behind-a-cheat-code Genesis counterpart. 
That meant no gore and no fatalities for us Nintendo kids. Uh, what's especially a shame is that it actually looked and ran uh, better on that cart than the one Sega was bringing to the table. Of course, that didn't matter. We needed our thirst for violence quenched. Um, imagine the ideal versions of Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter 2 with Turbo on the same system. The console wars would have been even hotter. Uh, so obviously there was a bunch of controversy surrounding these releases and the big N wanted to separate themselves from that. Um, we don't need to get into it all again. Just listen to the episodes. Um, the point is that the money this IP was accumulating became too massive to ignore. And the Mario guys stringent demand for sanitation wasn't going to cut it. Um, so sculptured software, the folks who translated the, uh, arcade cabinets code to home platforms began production on a total conversion that would revert the gray sweat back to red blood same with the finishing moves, um, this under acclaim and their partnership with Midway. Um, so it was commissioned. And uh, according to project manager uh, Jeff Peters, the back and forth approval process between them, acclaim, uh, Midway, and Nintendo was apparently a nightmare, um, thanks to the latter, which, yeah, I believe it. Of course. Um, he personally didn't get, like, what the issue was, uh, but one, like... Whatever they sent over kept failing the rigorous standards of hosting family-friendly content that was so intrinsically tied to their label, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Nintendo, I mean. Um, you can read the whole story if you like. It is interesting to see the solutions they uh, had to solve in, like, reconstructing the decapitations and spine rips and whatnot into the cleaner, non-killing blows um, with new graphics and animations. Like, I never thought about that. They had to, like, you know... And how this negatively affected the controls on the Super Nintendo build to a significant degree. Just because, like, with frame data and whatnot. Like, yeah. You know. um, so, um, anyway, uh, rejections after rejections. We got what we got in the end, while Sega was more hands-off to our benefit. Um, and there were uh, last-minute changes from executives, like, upstairs right uh, like to the final hour. Um, as a result of this fuckery, though, the Genesis port outsold the Super NES's edition 5 to 1. Um, so, yeah, um... Enter Mortal Kombat Nitro, a faster, dirtier MK1 that would keep your bleeding hearts and flying rib cages intact. The idea coming from product tester at a claim named James Frank, who uh, brought his concerns to Peters and Rob Holmes, an engineer at Sculpted. It was also greatly inspired by the aforementioned SF2 Turbo, the optimal way you'd play that game, you know, forever. <laughs> right. um, it had the speed, uh, it made the inputs feel tight. Mortal Kombat deserved that makeover too. And uh, and by by then, Nintendo had already decided to chill out on forbidding the violent stuff for their upcoming sequel. Why not remaster the original in the meantime? You'd get to recorrect your past history while getting the fans excited for a new, you know, the new entry. Everybody is happy. There'd even be extras, more blood, more fatalities, more stages, more costumes, more endings, more characters, more, more. Let's do it. Um... Goro, Shang Tsung, and Reptile would be added to the roster. Got to throw in those, you know, playground secrets. Uh, the special moves would be twice as rapid to pull off. They even, like, messed around, like, with, like, good and bad alignment-based uh, uh, mechanics, like, to expand on the heroes' uh, relationships to their villains. It was ambitious. Yeah. And entirely achievable on a technical level, the prototype was in full swing. Alas, before any uh, further progress was able to be made, Midway told them and Acclaim to put a halt to the development, and they obliged. MK2 is just too big of a deal following its groundbreaking launch into arcades. Porting, like, had to get, you know, started on that, and no one could be distracted with this old shit anymore. Right. Um, they had to increase focus on what was right ahead. Um, Bob uh, Pakunko, spearhead of the uh, famous Mortal Monday campaign for MK2, um, couldn't have this interfering with that. All hands had to be on deck. Uh, even Fink, even if Fink disagreed, uh, Bob wasn't going to allow his mega plans to be compromised. And, and yeah, I can see that both sides did have merit. I don't know, but we'll, we'll never know what this could have done in the commercial sense. Would fans have forked down another 60 to 80 bucks on a remaster? Can't say they did for street fighter. I mean, yep. They did but, multiple times for street. Fighter. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Fink still retains one of the two chips containing nitros unfinished code like that build, um, with blood and guts and all. Uh, the second ROM was given to a friend of his back in the day, someone named uh, Ed Boone. I don't know. Never heard of him. Yeah. Uh, quote, he might have lost it by now. Who knows? This was almost 30 years ago. Um, come on, Ed. Take a look around. Clean out your garage. Mm -hmm. This needs to be preserved. <laughs> Think about what a power move it would be if the almighty creator himself dropped this on us, like after the MK1 remake. Right. You know? Or not remake, reboot. Sorry. The Mortal Kombat 1, not Mortal 
not the other reboot, just called Mortal Kombat. <laughs> uh, and um, what is it? And uh, one quick apology. We recorded that episode a while ago. So any jokes about hockey skates sliding people's necks open was purely coincidental <laughs> and not whatsoever connected to that grisly incident with poor Adam Johnson that happened in late October. Mm-hmm. That that wasn't us being tasteless. It was just yeah. Um, but there we have it: a half decade of grueling work, and all it got us was 123 great episodes, no sponsorships, and thousands of dollars in the red. Wait, I got one additional update. <laughs> and I'm I was, kidding. I was informed <laughs> that I said that AEW bought TNA Wrestling, and I was oh right, yes, yeah. You I was wrong it. about that. TNA still exists. They're just <laughs> Some, not as popular somehow. They're called TNA Impact now. So, <laughs> do they? They don't have any uh, game like no, no. like uh, deal, like not that I know of. There might be like a shitty game they made, maybe, maybe but like iOS. Or... A AEW already can't make a game, and they're more popular. So <laughs> WWE can barely make a game. I wish the XFL was able to get a game. That would have been something. The XFL can't even play football. <laughs> Uh, but uh, so sincere thank yous to uh, anyone out there who downloaded us, streamed us, shared mm-hmm. us, added us, told their friends about us, guested or hosted for us, uh, gone to our website or who inadvertently be, you know, becomes a topic of their own in the future. Don't stop being crazy. Gaming industry yeah. <laughs> gives us never change material. except for maybe stop laying people off. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't do that. Uh, but uh, yeah, now let's do plugs and tell them what's coming in December. Well, I want to say thank you to. Video Games Chronicle, The Verge. They came up a few times for me, too. Kotaku, Variety, GamesIndustry.biz, uh, and Carl Jobst, and Ars Technica. Yeah. For our research. Uh, but, yeah, uh, thank you. Like Randy said, thank you for listening and downloading and all that jazz. Um, we are at the tail end of the year, which means that we are... It's Christmas time. Yes, we are doing, this episode is our update, and then we will be doing a Game Awards episode as per usual, and then Game of the Year as per usual, and then we'll be back with regularly scheduled programming in 2024. And we should say the Game Awards are on December 7th? Yes. Right? Thursday? So, it'll be after that, and then Game of the Year, our personal Game of the Year. Yep. Woo! But yeah, uh, you can find those episodes and all the episodes that we mentioned in this. We referenced literally everyone. So yeah. any topics pique your interest. Yeah. Uh, hotbuttoncast.com as well as all the podcast services. Uh, like and subscribe or whatever. Uh, <laughs> and follow our socials, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at hotbuttoncast for upcoming info. Yeah. And thank you for listening. Hope you all had a nice Thanksgiving. (laughs) Yep. Bye.